Wine and Crime contains graphic and explicit content that may not be suitable for some listeners. Listener discretion is advised. Again, y'all, and um, I can't. <laughs> you barely. are <laughs> barely. The holidays were rough. You are listening to Wine and Crime, the podcast where three friends chug wine, chat true crime, and unleash their worst Minnesotan accents. Mm-hmm. Hells to the yeah. You bet. Heckin' cool. <laughs> Heckin oh, for yeah. cute. <laughs> That's jokes. H e double hockey sticks. Oh. oh my god, pan hacky sticks. <laughs> hey no, um, tis the season. <laughs> hey no, you're an all star. Get your game on. Go play. Okay. I'm Kenyan <laughs> and embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Lucy and losing my patience. <laughs> I'm Amanda. And delirious <laughs> on cough medicine. <laughs> I came within 10 feet of a child on New Year's Eve weekend. Never a good idea. <laughs> Never. They are hotbeds of infection. They're petri dishes. <laughs> they really are. I, and none of them cover their cough. <laughs> no. There no. were three kids there, and they were so good and so cute. And I'm, like, very grateful for the time I spent up north, just in case any one of them is listening. <laughs> That will be the but f- none of y'all's kids cover their cough. First thing I teach my children, cough into your elbow. Mm-hmm. Yes. I was like, oh, God. And I, 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 I'm looking around and seeing these cuties running around coughing on fucking everything. Yep. Yep. And the first thought through my mind was, well. I'm fucked. I'm going to get sick. Yeah. I'm <laughs> yeah. going to get sick. And then within about 72 hours, it was like, yeah, here it is. She's settling in. <laughs> it's in. Oh, my God. Apparently, once when I was a baby, the whole family, like, went out to this nice Italian restaurant that was my grandpa's favorite, Digidio's. Olive Garden. <laughs> Digidio's in St. Paul, oh. Minnesota. <laughs> and, um... <laughs> Do they have endless soup, salad, and breadsticks? There were like 25 of us. It was like the entire extended family. And the food took a while to come out because it's for a group of 25. And then the second it was like all laid out, I was sitting in my aunt's lap as a baby and just instantly sneezed right into her bowl of pasta like the second (laughs) it was cooked out. I think you did that at the Olive Garden for my dad's funeral. Yeah. Sitting in your lap. (laughs) In my lap, 30 of us, all of my extended family. Yeah. (sighs) Yeah. My dad's funeral dinner was really fun, you guys. <laughs> it was really it was super fun. We got tore up. Is that when my you stole the Magnum did. out of the lobby? Yes. <laughs> yeah. It was not out of the lobby. It was out of a nook in our little <laughs> dining area where they had hidden us in the back because we're so fucking loud. <laughs> we're not welcome back. Okay, anyway. No, 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 no. No. Moving yeah, 86 on. for life. Um, this is our ep 101. And we shat so the cray. bed and did not do Dalmatian crimes because it. Oh my god! I think and that's why we drink named their hundred one first episode the hundred and one Dalmatian uh, episode. God bless. I know. Them. So at least somebody did it right. All right. Yeah, we really um, fucked love up. them. We really did. <laughs> okay, this is a very special fan pick, nonetheless, um, and it was picked by Ryan Nijakowski. Oh um, yes. And Ryan is sober, but uh, expressly stated that they are fine with an alcoholic pairing. So we did go ahead. Yes, and let's give a big fat congrats to Ryan on their sobriety. That is not an easy achievement, and you are fucking crushing. Yes. So amazing. Congratulations. So Ryan selected the topic, hot for teacher crimes. Mm Mm-hmm. And just a note on the title of this episode. Yeah. 
<laughs> we are not in any way condoning nor minimizing the harm of student-teacher quote-unquote relationships. Which are no, really in my just crime, rape. I intentionally misunderstood the assignment. Oh, good. So, so you did a Dalmatian I crime? Mean, I did a Dalmatian <laughs> crime, y'all. <laughs> and it still fits because the Dalmatian falls in love with their trainer, and it is absolutely adorable. You're gonna it's love it. It's about this crazy old bitch who steals 99 puppies to make <laughs> coats out of them. Yep, it is insane, y'all. <laughs> crazy woman driver. <laughs> Mine's more hot for student. <laughs> okay. So I just want to put that put that out there that we're the title 100%. sounds irreverent, but we didn't choose the title, and also the exact term "hot for teacher" is actually referenced as like a specific part of my case. Right. So it's like an inside call out. We understand how gross the title is. Yeah. Yeah. Got all it. too well. I like that we kept it though, and I fought so hard for sausage sisters, and <laughs> that didn't make it. <laughs> yeah. I just went ahead with Sausage Sisters for <laughs> Thelma and Louise Grimes. I'm... I was like, I don't care. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> we are about to record over a hundred episodes. <laughs> if they don't hate me by now, they never will. Let's do this. I run the spreadsheet and I wield the power with the naming. I love okay. it. Okay. What is our wine crime <laughs> pairing for hot for teacher crimes? <laughs> What goes well, with child rape? You oh know my what? god. <laughs> First of all, Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> Second of all, <laughs> school's out for the summer, folks, because we're drinking summer water rosé from Wink Wine Club. Oh, oh no. Oh, my god. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. School's out. <laughs> Winter break. Yikes. Summer water rosé by the gallon. School's out because the teacher has been arrested and imprisoned. Yeah. <laughs> or not because the school system would rather brush that shit under the rug. Right. Either way. Settle. Yep. Um, <laughs> let's wait for our rage until after the wine pairing is explained. <laughs> we can't even get through this part of the episode without having a meltdown. Um this is a Wink Wine Club exclusive. They are one of our amazing sponsors, and you should definitely check them out by going to trywink.com forward slash gals. That's T-R-Y-W-I-N-C dot com forward slash gals. If it's your first time ordering through them, you'll get 20 bucks off your first box. If you put four or more wines in that box, again, four or more, you can go cuckoo. Put as many as you want in there. Mm -hmm. As long as there's more than four or four or more, they take care of the shipping. It literally sends wine to your house or your workplace or your local Walgreens. So when you pick up your Preparation H, mm -hmm. you can also bring home a box of wine. And mm -hmm. if you need Preparation H, you probably also need a box of wine. <laughs> Um, they have an incredible inventory of wines from all over the world. A lot of features come out of California, and we keep talking about this, helping put some money back into that California economy in the light of devastating wildfires that have especially hit a lot of farms, and that includes vineyards. Mm -hmm. It's really nice to be buying California wine um, to kind of just get some money back into the economy and to help these farms recover from their losses. So if you're able to get your hands on some California wines, great. If you're not, trywink.com forward slash gals. You can drink along with us. We put some uh, selections upcoming on our website so you can like get a little wine and crime curated box. Mm -hmm. It's super fun. Mm -hmm. There's literally no downside and all of the bottles are like around 13 bucks. Mm -hmm. Hello. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Get after it. Um, this is a dry Grenache Syrah Rosé, which is legit my absolute favorite blend for Rosé. So I am so pumped on this. Y'all don't even know. Mm-hmm. That sounds good. School's I love it. Out. I love me a dry rosé. I know. There's something so refreshing about mm -hmm. a dry rosé. Mm -hmm. um, the grapes, the Grenache and Syrah grapes, were picked early in the season to achieve a natural acidity that tends to fade the more the grapes ripen on the vine. So I know we've talked about this before, but the longer a grape is allowed to ripen on the vine, the sweeter it gets, and it can even start to ferment on the vine. So to get that dry finish and crisp acidity, you want to pick those bad boys early. Mm -hmm. Don't let them get too ripe. This rosé was made using the direct press method, oh. which is 
preferable Our for favorite. me. I don't like to beat around the bush. Yeah, no pussy footing around the bush. Mm, direct <laughs> press. Um, this method involves allowing the grape juice to have contact with the skins for an extremely short period of time. So just instead tip, of allowing just the juice, for a second, just, just to tip, see how it feels. Just to see how it feels. Just to get some color in there. Mm. Well, pink. Um, instead of allowing the juice much time to soak and gain color, the grapes are pressed right away to remove the skins from the batch, just like a white wine would be. Um, but because rosés are made with red wine grapes, there's still that deep pigment in their skin. So no matter how you press the juice out, there will always be a hint of color in the juice because it's impossible for juice to have no contact with the skins. Mm. So it's just, it's gonna have some color to it. Mm. Um, but direct pressing... Yeah, 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 just exactly, just a little <laughs> bit. Uh, so direct pressing leaves the least amount of juice to skin exposure time, preferable. So this pr- uh, process tends to produce the lightest colored rosés, like, mm. in existence. And the summer water is no different. It is so delicate. It's like Lisa Vanderpump worthy light pink. Mm. And as she would say, sexy and absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> oh, you little sex monster. You, oh, jiggy, you little sex monster. <laughs> oh, my God. I just watched the episode of Real Housewives of Beverly Hills where she brings home the two mini horses. <laughs> oh, my God. Don't tell me I'm not there yet. I fucking cannot with her. She is absolute gold. She just got her, She has, like, pumpy. seven dogs. <laughs> rumpy. Little rumpy pumpy. Oh, my pumpy. God. Apparently anyway. that means butt sex. Oh okay, my god! I if d- anyone is listening who has happening. access to Lisa Vanderpump, <laughs> she said it, not please me. tell her how much we love her. Um, anyway, this is a crack. Oh. You want to serve this chilled, and we're going to allow mm. because it's a crack. Mm. Kenyon, yeah, I'm doing to it. To open her first bottle of the new year. Fingers Woo! crossed. Okay. For the show, not for herself. For Red, the show, def- to be fair. Yeah, definitely. One, yeah. two. You hear it? Oh, nice crack. crack. You little six I months to you. nailed it, y'all. <laughs> yeah, you did, baby girl. I have All never right. been more proud. If you Ooh. hadn't nailed it, I would be seriously questioning many things. Uh, uh, I would have just cracked my mm, bottle of Dayquil. Mm, mm. Loving some summer water because it's summer water. where I am. What up? Fuck you, bitch. Fuck you. It's basically you. summer right. where I am because the earth is dying and it's 55 degrees in January right now. That's just yeah. wrong. Negative uh-huh. 55 yeah. would make more sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. My windows are I open. Like it. I okay. I feel uncomfortable. Good thing you're not living on a coast. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. So, Lucy. Before we sink into the ocean because <laughs> yeah. of climate change. <laughs> Before Trump revives coal, what oh, is Jesus? our what? background inside? Thank you. I'm <laughs> just going to sit over here with my wine. You go, girl. You've been working hard. Take a load off. But yeah. first. I just popped a cough drop. But first, a song. <laughs> oh, I'm God. just kidding. Was, here we go. Oh, I was going oh, to give you shit and be like, I hope you prepared a song for us this episode. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you got ahead of that joke on your own. <laughs> Amazing. Oh, my God. Never singing again because I don't think I could top it. Okay. It was amazing. Everyone check out episode 100. If you're skipping around, <laughs> go listen to episode 100 <laughs> immediately. Yeah. yeah. My throat okay. still hurts. <laughs> A lot of people were like, she could sing if she tried, <laughs> which know. is more than I've ever gotten. So, <laughs> appreciate. I love it. I love if it. If I tried. There's a lot of scream singing in my car. <laughs> That's where I workshopped this episode 100 song. You nailed it. <laughs> okay. Background and psych here. So is it legal ever to have a student-teacher relationship? Oof. Um, That depends on a lot of things. First and foremost is the age of the student, assuming that the student is the younger party. I was trying to think of a scenario Mm. where the student would be older than the teacher and the teacher would be under 18, which, you know, not going to exclude anything. But for the sake of this, we're calling the student the younger party. If mm-hmm, you're mm-hmm, 47 mm-hmm. and your hot carpentry teacher is 49 and you're a yep. divorcee and they're a lifelong bachelor, 
of any gender, go for it, man. That student not teacher relationship is fine. Okay, not never mind. <laughs> Maybe don't go for it. I don't know. Depends on your school. We'll get to it. I am two sentences in. (laughs) Okay, so the age of consent. Federal law in the United States says that the minimum age of consent is 12. What? That's what the federal Um, law says. Um, But The federal law also still has marijuana listed as a Schedule 1 substance. So... Don't trust it. Federal law is kind of fucked in a lot of ways. But fortunately, at least a little more fortunately, in all the U.S. states, the minimum age of consent is between, or the age of consent is between 16 and 18. In Minnesota, it's 16. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. There are also laws about, like, if the other party, if the older party is 18 or younger, Like, if both parties Mm -hmm. are between the window of 16 and 18, it's a different thing. And if the older party is over 18 and the younger party is under 18, it's a different thing. I can see that. Because if you're, you know, 17 and your partner is 18 and you're both high school seniors. Right. Yeah. You know, yeah. It but. wouldn't be fall. Fa- it wouldn't really be fair to call it statutory rape if you were in like your a relationship your senior year of high school and you were seventeen and right. your partner was eighteen. Right. Right. Um, yeah. So there are loopholes that is state by state. I didn't really get into that, but I did research it when I was in high school and my boyfriend was eighteen. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh my god. <laughs> Just- is it too late to prosecute him now? <laughs> Yeah, a little too late. That's a good question. Probably. (laughs) Just be a real psychopath and be like, hi. (laughs) Destroy his marriage out of like a 20-year-old spite. (laughs) Let's not. He listens. I don't think he does. (laughs) I am 90% certain he does. Well, you know who you are, and I gave away that White Stripes poster, so meh. (laughs) (laughs) And I did on your car in the Target parking lot. Moving on. Kenyon did, not me. I know. I said uh, I. I think, oh, okay. Yeah. I think I also did. <laughs> I probably did. Too. <laughs> Only I got or in I trouble for it. it. Whatever. Okay. Okay. Uh, Hot for teacher. Back to this. <laughs> Hot for roasting Lucy's exes. We're changing the topic. <laughs> we have so much material. <laughs> I'm so excited. Oh my god. Okay. So this situation can become complicated in higher grades like high school and college, as we were just saying. Um, So imagine a 17-year-old student and a 21-year-old teacher. That's not uncommon. And that age gap is pretty small, and yet this relationship could potentially result in a prison sentence for statutory rape. Good. Mm -hmm. It should. Right. But like we were saying, you know, when the age right. gap is small and you would otherwise not think twice about starting a relationship with that person. Yeah. If one was in their 20s and like mid 20s and one was early 30s, like, mm-hmm. OK, big deal. Yeah. Right. But when it when it dips down into those teen years, y'all, it's a different ball game. Yeah. Drake. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, every male singer besides John Legend, apparently. God damn it. I have a bone to pick oh, with God. Hulu because apparently my subscription doesn't cover Surviving R. Kelly, and I don't know why. I'm sorry. What? Yeah, that's some bullshit. I don't get it. I know. I know. <laughs> that's another episode entirely. My beef yeah. with mm-hmm. Hulu. Okay. Yeah, not R. Kelly, but your beef <coughs> with right, Hulu. Right, right, yeah, right, right, got right. it. Got it. The real crime here. <laughs> <laughs> so, like Surviving I was saying, Hulu, the Lucy Fitzgerald <laughs> story. <laughs> Surviving digital streaming. Oh my God. Okay. In so, like I was saying earlier, Kenyon, in college, assuming that the student is 18 years old or older, it isn't illegal to have a sexual relationship, but it might be against the school's policy. In a mm-hmm. lot of cases, it is. Um, Mm -hmm. I also read something to that suggests in the UK, any relationship between a student and teacher in any scenario at any level results immediately in the teacher's termination. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So depends where you are. Do a quick Google search, cursory search. If you're 
thinking about making that move on your professor. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, these Lord. days, social media is creating very gray areas in the relationships between students and teachers, whether platonic or otherwise. And this yeah. was yeah. this was described as the erosion of formality in one article, which I thought put it pretty succinctly. Mm -hmm. Many younger teachers today open themselves up for students to text them, communicate through a web portal, like a school-sanctioned web portal, um, Mm -hmm. an online chat forum, et cetera, or even just emailing them. Plus, students are way savvy. They can, I mean, obviously find their teachers on Facebook or whatever and creep on them without them even knowing. Yeah, Instagram. Yeah, so this opens up the teachers. Zach's Instagram. Yeah, this opens up the teachers to possible blackmail with the a possibly very large internet audience for said blackmail. So there are a lot of cases where, like, a student might have taken a photo of their teacher's butt or something, or, like, they're bending over, or they're making a weird face, or they're doing something weird, and then they post that on on social media. And it's mm. just... It's just embarrassing. It's unnecessary. And then you have a big crowd of middle schoolers all online. Like, that's harassment mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah. from the student onto the teacher. So that sounds like a nightmare. <clears throat> oh, my God. I know. I know. So clearly lines have been blurred and the roles and power structures are not so clearly defined as they were when we were in elementary school, for example. And you'd see your teacher at Byerly's and you'd be like, what? She doesn't they live eat? at school? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so like God. times have changed even the emailing which is entirely for like particular assignments or whatever that just is so bizarre to me because like Zach is a teacher and his students will email him with questions at all times of day or night yeah. Not that he yeah. necessarily has to respond at all times of day or night, and he puts boundaries on, like, when he'll respond. But we never used to do that. It was like, ask your other friends in your class when mm-hmm. the due date yeah. is. Like, you don't ask the teacher. I mean, we didn't. Look at the syllabus, yeah. for fuck's sake. <laughs> yeah. I can't. I can't. As a student. Yeah. Yeah. Can you imagine how many times I look around and I, I mean, I'm sorry if any of my classmates are listening. I love you. However, <laughs> sometimes y'all ask questions where I'm like, look at the fucking syllabus. Yeah. It's right there. Yeah. Why are you asking this question? This is a waste of time. Mm-hmm. Yep. Put your hand down. I also yeah. think in my teaching experience, which was in China and in Zach's current teaching experience, with, which is in South Africa, a lot of the student teacher relationship stuff is cultural. And it also is really dependent on what grade you're in. Like if you grew up, if you're in sixth grade now and you grew up from K through six having all of the technology of the internet at your totally. fingertips, right. you totally. live in a very different world than we did. Or you know, Yeah, right. I couldn't email a teacher because A, I didn't know a teacher's email address. And right. B, I was working on a family computer gateway 2000 right. <laughs> with <laughs> dial-up. Yeah. And my mom settled into it to play Luxor by like 7 p.m. And nobody was getting on or that shit. someone had to make a phone call so you had to log off. Right. Yeah. 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 I know. So a lot of pen and paper work in my uh, elementary and high school years. (laughs) Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, So this is from a 2009 Guardian article by John Henley. And so it says this teacher had a name, but it doesn't matter because this is out of context. This teacher is responsible for his school's applications to Oxford and Cambridge. Quote, I've given my students my home email address simply because you need a quick turnaround, he says. But you can see the scope for problems. An email or text is very much a one-to-one thing. A pupil might feel specially valued. Even on the school site, I could be marking online, like grading things online, live, Mm -hmm. maybe quite late in the evening. I could have had a glass of wine. God, hopefully you did. I could start discussing work with a student who's also online. It's Facebook by another name, really. You could easily make comments that you'd regret. Plus, all of the comments, either email, text message, anything digital, that's recorded, and that can come back and bite your ass in a court. One oh, yeah. thousand percent. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Why I cannot run for public office. <laughs> <laughs> Too many nudes. Mm-hmm. For real. 
and nipples here, are all over the internet. In, <laughs> they are rampant. In South Africa, the legal drinking age is 18, and so it. I mean, that doesn't affect. Uh, Zach, because he's a middle school teacher, but some of our friends here are high school teachers, so some of their students are 18 and legally allowed to buy alcohol. So sometimes on the weekend or on like a Friday afternoon, the teacher will oh, run no. into their own students in their liquor store and like, oh dear, the teacher is buying booze the to like get through the weekend, and the students are buying a shit ton of booze for that weekend's party. Oh my god, <laughs> that is so awkward. That is the one reason I'm like grateful for a 21 year mm-hmm. drinking age. I could not imagine like running into Miss Sinkler. <laughs> yeah. At MGM on Highway 7 and 101. Yeah, I know. Get, getting ready to grade AP English papers. <laughs> yeah. All weekend. I'm like a bottle of tequila. I'm really going to need a bigger bottle of I need your largest bottle that is on the market uh, of tequila. Cheers to Miss Sinkler yeah. and to VP and Lobs and all the lovely people. Doc Swanson. Okay. Influential women, mm-hmm. English teachers all. Mm-hmm. Yes. I see Miss Sinkler as a Scotch woman. Just yeah. I bet she drinks the brown liquor. For her. Yeah. She deserves it. Yeah. God bless. Or, well, she's crocheting like hats. schnapps. Just like only schnapps, grass totally hoppers. left field. She's a Zima guy. She's a men's head. <laughs> Singler, if you're listening, hi, nice to see you. And also, please email us at wineandcrimepodcast at gmail dot com yeah. to let us know what your drink of choice is and, we will and where send we can deliver. You. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. So, legal punishments for crimes related to student-teacher sexual relationships. I wanted to talk about this mm. so that we can apply them to your individual cases. Mm-hmm. So we've got sexual harassment, which could include an element of quid pro quo exchange of favors to maintain a hostile, manipulative environment where the victim doesn't feel like there's a way out. For example, exchanging good grades for sex. Huge, massive, massive <clears throat> problem with that in South Africa. Mm -hmm. We will get into the psychology of power dynamics in just a minute, so we'll get back to this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, This can include sexually aggressive behavior that the perpetrator slash older person might see as merely flirting, like making suggestive comments or jokes, etc., but are extremely... well, How about don't? Mortifying Just to the younger on person. the side of caution <laughs> mm-hmm. and fucking don't. Well, right. Mm-hmm. Obviously, fucking don't do any of these. <laughs> mm-hmm. Right. Um, but yeah, when you're older, flirting. I mean, that's a that 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 depends on the age of the person you're flirting with. Yeah, sometimes it's flirting, True. and sometimes it's fucking misconduct. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But even, like, I'm saying from as a 31-year-old person, if a 68-year-old man was, quote-unquote, flirting with me, if he sees it as flirting, it might genuinely feel like he's flirting. But for me, it's like, the fuck? Ew. Yeah. Get away Uh, from me. Yeah. Yeah. I have different thoughts and feelings on that, but... (laughs) Because you like it. I'd be like, yes, daddy, how much are you worth? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and sit right by me. And what is Jeff your take home after tax? I make an exception, <laughs> but I'm of the legal age to consent, so it's fine. Yeah, I'm mm-hmm. like when double can I legal start age collecting on your social security? I'd also like to point out, just in retrospect, that a 68 year old man flirting with me is not the same as an older person flirting with a 14 year old student. Right. But mm-hmm. right. in the interest of illustrating that point, mm-hmm. I already said it. Okay. So we've got statutory rape when one or both parties is under the state's age of consent and conviction often includes prison time and registry as a sex offender. Mm-hmm. 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 Um, and then we have sexual misconduct, which is a big old umbrella. It encompasses a range of behavior used to obtain sexual gratification against another's will or at the expense of another. So sexual misconduct includes sexual harassment, sexual assault, and any conduct of a sexual nature that is without consent or has the effect of threatening or intimidating the person against whom such conduct is directed. Mm -hmm. State laws vary on defining acts which constitute sexual misconduct, but generally it can involve any of the following acts. Listen up, Amanda. 
I'm listening. <laughs> Take notes, Amanda. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm not going to check off any boxes in this area, okay? I only harass people who are above the age of 18. Yes. Still counts as sexual misconduct, but that's okay. <laughs> I'm fine. Did you see what they were wearing? <laughs> They were asking for it. Oh, my God. <laughs> Just saying. He was drunk. I was drunk. She was drunk. They were drunk. Yeah, I like beer, okay? Beer. <laughs> Sometimes I have beer and I drink beer. Sometimes have you I seen like my good calendar? rum ham. <laughs> the more I conduct sexual misconduct, the higher my chances of being appointed to public office in the Supreme Court. <laughs> that's true. So I'm just Statistically, that's true. my dreams. So okay. if you want to be appointed to the Supreme Court of the United States, you might try... And you're a white male. Intentional touching without consent. Mm-hmm. Exposing... Mm, by the pussy. Exposing his or her genitals under circumstances likely to cause affront or alarm... Mm-hmm. Having, s- always. having s- I'm always alarmed when someone exposes their genitals to me, even in a consensual situation. I'm always oh, alarmed. Yeah, I like this. <laughs> oh, right. I wanted your penis. Okay. 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 <laughs> Got this. Having sexual contact in the presence of a third person or persons under circumstances likely to cause affront or alarm, like mm-hmm. sex in a public place. Mm-hmm. Having sexual intercourse or DV. Deviate, deviant sexual intercourse deviant, in a public yeah. place in the presence of a third person. Okay, I just said that. I guess we covered all our bases. <laughs> so, soliciting or requesting another person to engage in sexual conduct under circumstances in which he, he or she or they or neither knows that their or whatever request or solicitation is likely to cause affront or alarm. There are a lot of typos in what I copied and pasted this out of. It's fine. Apparently. It's fine. Forcing a victim to touch directly or through clothing another person's genitals, breast, groin, thighs, or buttocks. Amanda? <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> uh, vaginal or anal intercourse. I like intercourse. pinching a butt every once in a while. It's usually my own, though. <laughs> Fellatio or cunnilingus and sexual penetration with an object without consent. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so that, again, all falls under sexual misconduct. So I think you could be charged with statutory rape, for example, and also sexual misconduct. It could, okay. It, I think it counts as, like, an additional charge that they can put on, mm. like, in addition to something that was a little more straightforward. And maybe if they had a witness to a misconduct charge and they didn't have a third witness to... Mm-hmm. Um, the statutory rape charge. Right. Mm-hmm. Something like that. I'm not a lawyer, but, you know. But I feel like all these these terms, these additional um, charges, are that's sort of their purpose is to just kind of layer on, depending on witnesses and evidence and all that stuff, testimony. Right. Object. Um, okay. Yeah. Right. Okay, let's talk about power dynamics. This is from a 2000... My favorite. I know. This is from a 2009 paper by Dr. Mary Ellen Weimer. Um, Communication educators have taken a well-known typology of power and applied it to teachers. According to this theory-based schematic, individuals exert influence over other individuals based on five different sources of power. I thought this was really interesting. So we first is reward power. Students learn quickly that teachers can give them rewards such as bonus points, extra credit, or other forms of positive feedback. Students do what the teacher asks or tells them asks or tells them to do because they are motivated to get these rewards. Mm-hmm. Like a dog. Mm-hmm. Reward power. Or parenting. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, coercive power. So this is students also learn that teachers can punish. There may be penalties for late papers or unexcused absences. In this case, students respond to the teacher's power because they want to avoid these kinds of punishments. So negative reinforcement versus positive. Mm-hmm. Then we have legitimate power. Students expect teachers to have some authority over them. Teachers determine what students will study, what assignments they will complete, and what standards they must reach in order to pass and to do well. If students accept these agreed-upon definitions of a teacher's role, they will acquiesce to the teacher's direction. So mm-hmm. what you'd yeah. expect a student walking into a classroom with a teacher, the teacher has more inherent authority over them. Right. Right. <clears throat> referent power or referent referent students do the teacher's bidding because the students admire the teacher 
because students identify with the teacher and have positive regard for him or her or they, they willingly do as the teacher says. So they just like mm-hmm. the teacher. Mm-hmm. It's why we just asked Miss Sinkler to come forward so we can ship her some scotch. Yeah. You know what? She's not my teacher anymore. <laughs> yeah. She's, still She's my, my teacher. friend now. If she lets me be her friend, <laughs> please be my teacher. <laughs> please, God, be my friend. <laughs> okay. And then lastly, we have expert power. This power comes from the teacher's knowledge of content and or expertise as an educator. (laughs) Students are willing to do as the teacher says because they recognize that the teacher knows more than they do. So those are the five different types of power the the Mm -hmm. teacher has. So teachers make moves based on these sources of power. They tell students how to solve a problem or that points will be taken off the paper, uh, taken off if the paper is late, and they will respond with smiles, nods, and positive reactions to a student's answer. If a student responds, if students respond by following the teacher's direction, their behaviors confirm their willingness to let the teachers influence them. So, mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. a, there there are also student teacher relationships where the student is the more pursuer um, rather than the teacher. So I suppose this is sort of relating more to when the teacher is the seductor in the relationship and maybe it's more of an abuse of power than in the other way around. Even the quote unquote pursuing, like if the student is under the age of consent, then that pursuing behavior is not legally the result of you know, uh, oh, their for sure. free will it's to... It's still up to the uh, teacher right, right. to maintain that authority and those boundaries, 100%. Right. But it's not necessarily... Be... It's not necessarily harnessing one of these five types of power for the teacher to um, pursue a student. It could still be, though, the student's response to one of those types of power, where the student thinks because they're not thinking clearly because their brain is not developed enough yet. Like, if I pursue this in this way, I will get rewards. I will get, you know, or I do admire this older, wiser person. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I still think it it corresponds to those different types of power, just on the other end. Yeah. Yeah. It happens in all kinds of relationships like that too. Like it happened like there's transference in therapeutic relationships <laughs> yeah. and there are power dynamics there too. Mm-hmm. And I think that especially in a student teacher thing, like these people can be admired and trusted and seen as like, you know, all knowing and then to also have them be giving you grades and giving you praise and like literally judging your work. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's like a hotbed and hormones. Uh, yeah. yeah. Puberty. And well, if you g- it's like a fucking hotbed of possibilities for crushes right to go too far. I have one last quick section. So let's talk about sexual fantasies for a quick mo. Oh, God. Ooh, my fave. <laughs> Um, Many, if not most, if not virtually all students will at some point have a fantasy about a romantic relationship with a teacher. Hi, Mr. Geisler. Oh, my God. I was about to say that. So was I. I got an A plus in science, (laughs) y'all. Me. The only time. The only time I've ever done well in science. They, They upgraded me to the, like, higher level science class the next year, and I practically failed out because... <laughs> yeah, you ended up with Mr. Hessian, and that was not as good. Because I got an A-plus because I had the hots for Mr. Geisler. Yeah. He was 100%. so attractive. Okay, exhibit A, B, and C, Gorgeous. Mr. Geisler. <laughs> he looks like... What's the, what's the guy who played the guy... He kind of looks like Paul Walker, R.I.P. Yeah, but he also looks like that movie, The Bachelor. And he also oh, was like yep. Robin in the old Batman movies. Chris, Why can't I fucking think of who that is? Chris, Chris O'Donnell. O'Donnell. Yep. Yeah. He looks like if he Chris, Chris O'Donnell, O'Donnell and Paul Walker had a beautiful baby with the most exquisite Holy jawline shit. ever. Yeah. Can like we talk about Chris my O'Donnell fantasies of Chris O'Donnell football. and Paul Walker? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> okay. Anyway. All right. <laughs> so we're objective. What episode your is seventh this? Grade science Hot teacher for Chris era. O'Donnell. Oh right, that. <laughs> okay. So clearly, 
Clearly, hopefully we're not the only ones. I am we're not. blushing. I am 31 and blushing. I think I have to take my top off again while recording. Over I'm Mr. Geisler. Yeah, warm. I might take my top off. Mr. Geisler, I'm, I'm taking my top warm. off. And I, and I just want to put it out there that he never at any point did anything inappropriate oh, whatsoever. Oh, of course not. Yeah. Ever. No. Yeah. Ever. That he was so great. Of. <laughs> we are being the predators right yeah. now, one thousand oh, percent, yeah. one thousand percent. And um, if you are listening, I definitely could use some private tutoring. <laughs> I still don't understand the Earth's rotation around the sun. Yeah, I need to take a science credit for my psych undergrad. So, oh, oh we God. dissected Move frogs in. with that beautiful mofo. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Smell of formaldehyde Lydia still Adam. turns me on. Maybe that's why <laughs> yeah. I almost went into mortuary science. Maybe. It is. It's Maybe. all guys' fault. Transference, speaking <laughs> of. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, moving on. And many responsible, well-meaning teachers will develop certain feelings for their students which might be sexual in nature. Mm. This... This is might be. This is a byproduct that can be reasonably psychologically expected of any occupation where interpersonal relationships are essential to getting the job done. And again, I will say that it is probably a bigger issue if you're teaching second graders versus high school seniors, but I'm just putting this out there. Still, anyone as someone who has briefly worked in a middle school, Anyone yeah. that can look at those children and think uh, of anything yeah. other than, like, they're just, like, goofy children, there's an underlying issue. I'm mostly uh, referring yeah. to older high school students slash yeah. college students in this scenario. Okay. Because, okay. I mean, at a certain age, it's pedophilia, and that's right a different okay. thing. I mean, that's really not what I'm talking about here. Okay. Right. But still, it happens, and ew, what the fuck is wrong with you? Yeah. I mean, psychologically, without being extremely judgmental psychologically, it's, it's just a thing. And let me just get through this section, and then we can discuss. Okay. Um, it is up to the teachers, as we were saying, to maintain a standard of respect and not to abuse their authority and compromise their role as what is, first and foremost, a caretaking role. Mm-hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. thoughts and actions are two very different things. Teachers take on a parenting role and as a parent and a parent child sexual relationship is a whole different category of psychology and potentially abuse. But then, you know, I started going, I started reading, well, uh, this article went more into this parent child sexual relationship sort of psychology. And it's not always, um, necessarily like a genital sexual relationship. It could just be a parent recognizing that their adolescent child is attractive and then the way that the parent kind of behaves around that. The example okay. was a father and like his daughter who was like, you know, 15 and developing and all this stuff. Like psychologically, a father might acknowledge and recognize that his daughter is sexually attractive, not necessarily that he's feeling genital stimulation because of that, but just it's a, it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's part of psychology. It's just a thing. Okay. <clears throat> um Where was I? Okay, so possibly acknowledging the possibility of these kinds of attractions could go farther in preventing student-teacher relationships than retaining this shameful stigma attached to it, possibly. The tabooness of this type of relationship, which is not to say that it is not wrong and damaging. It is Mm -hmm. wrong and damaging in the vast majority of cases. Um, That might be preventing us from passing more comprehensive legislation and rehabilitating both perpetrators and victims. So okay. talking about it and also acknowledging, like we were saying, the difference between a relationship with a second grader and a relationship with a high school senior or at least an attractive, an attractiveness there. Mm-hmm. It's just something that should be acknowledged and should be talked about because it is so it is fairly prevalent and there's just so much gray area, and it, and with our changing society and all these technological advances and these gray areas and these blurred lines, it's it's not going to get better unless people are comfortable acknowledging it and talking about it and finding ways to prevent it. Hmm. I genuinely 
think that that's where a lot of these um, sexist and misogynist, um, like, school dress code rules come from Mm -hmm. is, like, the stated goal is, like, to not distract male students. But I honestly feel like... Yeah, it's They're looking more... at porn on their smartphones under the desk. Like, the right. girl in front of them in class is not the primary <laughs> problem. Or, or she's going right. to, or, you know, th- whoever they're attracted to, any student they're attracted to is going to be distracting, even if they're wearing a fucking, like, sack. Mm-hmm. Like, literal potato sack. It doesn't matter. They're teenage hormones. Um but I think a lot of those prudish rules that are put in place that put an undue burden on girls um, to hide their bodies and suppress their sexuality is more to make adults feel more comfortable around the adolescents. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's my <laughs> background and psych and... There's a lot to unpack, and I'm not claiming to be 100% correct about any of this, but there are multiple angles to every side of the story, and I'm just trying to be the least judgmental and the most trying to pay attention to psychological reasons behind all of this. There are a lot. There are reasons behind all human behaviors, so that's just kind of what I was trying to explore here. No. Ugh, Okay. I don't know about you, but I am someone who makes New Year's resolutions, and one of my New Year's resolutions was to get jacked and (laughs) get in shape, maybe for the first time in my life. Mm -hmm. And um, one way to kick off your New Year right and stay on track to meet your New Year's resolutions and personal goals is with Noom. Yes. Noom is awesome. I... Okay. This is Lucy, because no one can tell Kenyon and me apart. (laughs) As you know, I love the psychology part of understanding something and, like, kind of getting an upstream, downstream kind of perspective. And Noom is incredible because it walks you through each day. There are different articles that you can read, and it talks about the psychology of weight loss, of forming habits, of breaking habits, um, just any everything that goes on psychologically with, you know, sticking to a, a plan and and completing it. And diet is not necessarily a, something that they talk about. Diet as in, like, a diet plan. Um, so they Yeah, make it's it, not fad dieting. Yeah. No, exactly. Exactly. So it's an app on your phone. You have it whenever and wherever you need it. It tracks your steps for the day. It keeps you motivated. It sends you reminders if you want them to track your meals. It's just incredibly handy. Plus, you have a goal specialist in the palm of your hand, and they can give you feedback. They can motivate you. They can answer any kind of questions that you have. I check in with my goal specialist almost every day, Tiffany. Hi, Tiffany. And it's just great to have that that feedback and that person who can just sort of give you an extra boost, a little motivation whenever you want. It's great. And I've lost four pounds. Amazing. Go me. Um, Go la. <laughs> so Noom is designed for results. So you can meet your resolutions by signing up for your trial today at Noom, N-O-O-M dot com forward slash gals, G-A-L-S. So what do you have to lose? Visit Noom.com forward slash gals to start your trial today. Again, that's Noom.com forward slash gals. Start losing weight for good. Do it. FabFitFun is a seasonal subscription box with full-size beauty, fitness, fashion, and lifestyle products. Full-size, people. Full-size. Not a joke. None of that Not a drill. mini stuff. Mm-mm. It retails for $49.99, but always has a value of over $200. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're not going to find that in stores, folks. Um, You can use the coupon code GALS, G-A-L-S, for $10 off your first box at www.fabfitfun.com. And you do not want to miss out on this. We have our winter editor's box that we received in the mail. And let me tell you, there were several things in that box that saved my skin this winter mm-hmm. so far, there were some black brand, um, like under eye little pads that that just take your swelling down under your eyes. Uh, wear love. them in the tub, they're incredible. Mm-hmm. 
There's some exfoliating, uh, like, shower gel from Kate Somerville. Uh, There's stuff yep. from Anthropology. Hello. What? Yeah. Just so beautiful skincare. We got a set of little bowls. We got that jade roller that Amanda loves. Yes. Um, a really, really cozy throw that has been part of my wardrobe. Not sure that that was their intention. <laughs> But I've been wearing it as like a sh- like a top. <laughs> I lo- you do you, girl. I love it. It's incredible. Um, so don't miss out on the chance to wear a blanket as clothing uh, because these FabFitFun boxes sell out fast. So check out www.fabfitfun.com, F-A-B-F-I-T-F-U-N.com, and use the code GALS, G-A-L-S, so you can save $10 off your first box, making it only $39.99. Again, that is fabfitfun.com, and use the promo code GALS. You deserve to treat yourself. Treat your winter skin. Okay, you ready to get grossed out? I love I it. We I love there. this case. <laughs> this is uh, the fan selected case, but it's it's a good one. It's a well known case, but always mm. deserves more attention because it's so fucked up. Mary Kay. Okay. Yep. Ooh, you know it. Yes. You know it. Sorry. <laughs> All right, Mary. Ruining Kenyon's reveal. I'm sorry, I wasn't looking at your notes. (laughs) My reveal was in sentence two, so it's fine. Oh, okay. Mary Catherine Schmitz was born in California in January 1962. Yikes. Her childhood nickname was Cake, but as an adult, she went by Mary Kay. There we go. Dublin. There you go. Lucy called it. Mary Kay was the fourth of seven children raised in a strict Catholic household. Hence Obviously. The seven children. Yep. Um, her parents were both successful in their careers, and her mother, also named Mary, was a chemist, which was very unique for the time, especially with seven children. Yeah. Like, kudos there. Um, And her father was a university professor and, for a time, a Republican congressman. But his political aspirations were dashed when it came out that he had fathered two children out of wedlock with a former college student of his. So sleeping with students obviously runs in the family. Oh, my God. In 1973, when this is actually really sad, when Mary Kay was 11 years old, her three-year-old brother drowned in the family pool. And Mary, I know, and Mary Kay had been the one responsible for looking after the toddler at that at that time. Oh no! And she always blamed herself for her baby brother's death. Oh. And also, she was 11 when this very traumatic event happened, which I feel like will be significant. Oh, shoot. Oh, dear. To just, like, armchair detective, this whole thing. Armchair (laughs) psychologist, this whole thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, Mary Kay met her future husband, Steve Letourneau, while both were attending Arizona State University. For many years, Arizona State had a reputation as being a major party school. No, oh, for it. many years, it all stay. <laughs> including this year. Well, I yeah. looked into it because um, I was curious. I was like, "Oh, I wonder where its ranking is." Because it used to be ranked number one, like year after year, for being a party school. Mm-hmm. Um, but now it's not even listed in the top twenty-five. What really? Yeah. So Arizona That's State, I think, is is doing a lot to try to change its reputation that it had for many decades. Um, What's number one? Uh, Boulder. Uh, I don't remember. I'd have to go look. But one of them was like something something Methodist College, which I thought was pretty funny. <laughs> oh <laughs> no! Amazing. Like it always is. Like Ball Kansas State. State, like Kansas State Lower Methodist College or something like that. It was like, oh my god, oh, amazing! No. I aspire to be a Lower Methodist. <laughs> Hashtag goals. My top half is Sikh, but my lower half is Methodist. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Okay. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> so, God. <laughs> so, Mary Kay <sighs> and Steve get married. They're college sweethearts, sort of. But Mary Kay would later say that she never loved Steve but that when they conceived their first child together, she was pressured to marry him to legitimize the baby. Because mm. been there. So apparently her father could only tolerate his own bastard children. God damn it. <laughs> Fucking patriarchy. Yeah. Yep. Both Mary Kay and Steve admit that they each had numerous extramarital affairs throughout their marriage. So it was not mm-hmm. perfect marital bliss um later mary Kay alleged that steve was emotionally and physically abusive throughout their marriage and she claims that she was twice hospitalized we don't as far as i know we don't have any records um uh but journalists did confirm that she never filed any charges against her husband but that doesn't mean that there wasn't abuse right correct right right so we just don't know um Still, the couple would go on to have four children, ostensibly together. <laughs> Although, oh, no. <laughs> who knows? There's some, there's some <laughs> curiosity there. Um, and they were married for almost 15 years. Dang. Steve worked for Alaska Airlines, and Mary Kay was an elementary school teacher. Oh, yeah. Sure yikes. was. Mary Kay's life was forever changed when Vili Fulau was enrolled in her second grade class. <laughs> what? <Good Lord. laughs> oh no. At Shorewood Elementary School in Washington State in a suburb of Seattle. Second grade. I yeah. I can't date boys I knew in middle school because I watched them pick their noses so much. Yeah, it's like if I've seen you boys with my age. Mm-mm. No. Second mm-hmm. grade, you can hardly form complete sentences. Yeah. I mean, you, you, you can form complete sentences. Barely. But your ideas are garbage and you're an idiot because you you're a really second grader. You can't really write them very well. Not really. You, no. you haven't even begun to tackle the paragraph. Mm-hmm. You're me- you're mm-hmm. learning the months and the seasons. <laughs> Pretty much. God damn it. The only thing you've truly mastered is your name and colors. Yeah. And address. All right. Hopefully. So, Fulao, uh, who is Samoan American, was born in 1983, a year before Mary Kay married Steve and gave birth to her first child. So he's essentially as old as her oldest child. He is 100%. older. He is one year older than her oldest child. Oh, uh, well, a full year then. Okay, I get it. Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> um, by all accounts, nothing untoward happened while Vili was a second grader under Mary Kay's tutelage. But uh, okay. ye- years later, Mrs. Latorno. Laterno. Laterno, sorry. Switched teaching positions and began teaching sixth grade. And switching grades and even subjects as a teacher is fairly common. And I think the sixth grade was still part of the elementary school. It wasn't part of a middle school. So switching within, like, elementary grades year to year is fairly common for teachers. Mm -hmm. Um, Okay. Now, 12-year-old Vili was once again her student. But oh, how he'd changed in 34-year-old Mary Kay's eyes. Ugh. I can't. Sixth 12. grade, though. Let's talk about what you're incapable of in sixth grade. Everything. Yeah. Probably uh, basic function. Writing an essay. I and everything. You're Doing your own laundry. Grade. You don't even know, yeah, yeah, no. I'm trying to think, like, what a sixth grader actually knows how to do, and it's nothing. I rode the school bus for the first time in sixth grade. Yeah, you can buckle your own seatbelts. You're out of car seats. But you're still not supposed to sit in the front seat of a car. No. (laughs) Oh, my God. Yeah, 12, year, 12 years old, and my notes say, gag, 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 I can barely write this. 
(laughs) Mary Kay claims that her, quote, relationship, her word, not mine, didn't become sexual while he was her student. Rather, she began raping the child the following summer, once Villy was a rising seventh grader. Oh, no. Don't say rising. Well, he wasn't in seventh grade yet. <laughs> Don't say rising. Seventh grade was My his God. rising house. Stop. <laughs> and Jupiter aligns and- with Mars. Oh, my God. (laughs) Then Mary Kay will guide the planet and their love will steer the stars. Yeah, (laughs) pretty much, pretty much. According to Mary Kay, while he was her student in sixth grade, she merely took Billy under her wing and encouraged a friendship with her oldest son, who was only a year younger. If by wing you mean thighs. Yeah. Oh, my God. I, I, you, stop. But then that summer... The two, meaning Mary Kay and Villy, I believe, were taking classes from the same community college. Definitely not the same class, I got to imagine. Um, but they spent more time together because it was summer and they were both at the same community college. And, quote, one day after class, they went out to eat together. Afterwards, in Mary Kay's car, Billy asked if he could kiss her. She accepted. Hold on. Hold on. I have two questions. Yeah. What kind of class would a seventh grader be taking at a community college? I don't know. I didn't read anything about him being, like, exceptionally bright or, or, you know, super advanced for his age. Like, well, I didn't... and people do... Post-secondary has been around for a long time. It could have... Like, there's shit that... It could have been something like that. It could have been... I, it I don't could know. have been you a take... class structured for children that happened to be located at the community college. Mm-hmm. You know, like, I used to take French classes that were for kids... But they were, you know, in this church basement and that community college classroom right. and, you know, just Could whatever have been there summer was school, space. too, I guess. I don't, it doesn't sound like it was summer school because I think that would have been at the elementary school, but it was some sort of class. Okay. Um, my second question. It could have been swimming lessons for all we know because. Yeah. I mean, it easily could have been something, something like that. So yeah. my second question is she had been raping him all summer. And then psychologically, he thought potentially that he that they were in an, an adult relationship where they both had equal footing. And then he asked if he could kiss her to like sort of substantiate these adult roma- like a like a functional romantic relationship fantasy. No, 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 no. Their story is that he asked if he could kiss her. Clearly, there was quote-unquote flirting. He asked if he could kiss her when they were alone together in her car. She said yes. At least he was getting consent. And And then then later... Yeah, and then later, while her husband was out of town, they say they slept together for the first time, and I say she raped him for the first time. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. By the following spring, it was apparent that Mary Kay was once again pregnant. God damn it. I think at this point... God damn it. Yeah. I think at this point she was about seven months along. Was this her fifth child then? Yes. The fifth child. Oh, my God. <laughs> my, still <gasps> my favorite book to this day. Better than mm. The Hot Zone? Top five. Okay. <laughs> A relative of her husband, Steve, contacted the police and notified them of the affair. And this is my speculation, but I'm guessing that Steve and Mary Kay weren't exactly having marital relations at this point. And because things were rocky and and then she became pregnant. So it was like, how the fuck? Yeah. So then Steve knew something was up and began digging. And then Steve has told reporters that he found love letters between his wife and Billy. And then to his horror, he realized that the baby's father was his wife's 13 year old former student. Good God. Can you imagine? No, I can't. I mean, 
it's devastating enough <clears throat> to have your marriage be falling apart and to have somebody in the marriage be unfaithful, but that is otherworldly. It's right. a, whole a year different level. older than your oldest child. child. Uh huh. This yeah. isn't cycle. I mean, th- this she's clearly disturbed. I think yeah. that the 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 how disturbing that realization would be would just be coupled with like this special kind of horror. <laughs> yeah, like who <laughs> it's have not, I married? It's oh not. Yeah, it's not just rage that she was having an affair that she became pregnant by the person that she was having an affair with, but no. like the the discovery that he was her thirteen year old former student would be like. Almost like, okay, slow down. This is a, there's something psychologically wrong with this woman. Or like, yeah. is Ashton Kutcher going to appear and tell me I am being punked? Right, right, right. And she's because the this mother can't be fucking real. of your four kids. I can't. Uh, yeah, I can't wrap boys. my head around it at all. Two girls and two boys. Oh, okay. So in March 1997, Mary Kay Letourneau was arrested and charged with two counts of second-degree child rape. She has reportedly, or sorry, she has repeatedly told reporters that she wasn't aware that raping a tween was against the law. A tween is a 13-year-old child. Well, I called no. him a tween. Oh, Okay. Oh, I thought that were her, that was like a quote yeah. from her, and I was like, "Girl, you're getting real ballsy." Yeah. Here. No, I Mary Kay. I called him a tween because he was twelve and thirteen. That's he's tweeny. technically a tween, but if she had said that, that would have been extraordinarily dismissive and disgusting. No, but she right, said right, 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 she right, right, wasn't right. aware that what she did was against the law. Right. And for her, okay. the crux of the problem was that she was still married at the time. Oh no! Oh my God. Quote, this is not that she was raping a kid. Right. So from Mary Kay, quote, I was suspended and all of a sudden it doesn't look good for me. I'm married still, even though I was in a separation period. That's really not okay. I didn't imagine I would need an attorney. I didn't (gasps) imagine there were criminal consequences. I didn't know that I needed an attorney. Get it? So if if what? she had been a man I, I don't and the student that. had been a girl, would there have been any question in anybody's minds as far as the legality of this situation? I fucking hope not, but I don't know. I she she sees it in such a twisted way. But I bet a lot of that has to do with the fact that she's the woman and he's the boy or the man in her eyes, I guess. They do talk a lot also, in like, interviews about like how he was the pursuer, he was in charge. Mm-hmm. No, he wasn't. He was thirteen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he can't be. He can't be. Yeah. He's a. He's a. His prefrontal lobe is not developed for another twelve years. Yeah. Good fucking lord. And I understand that there's a double standard here, but like, I yeah, I she's. She's a rapist. Yeah. I'm sorry. That's how I feel about mm-hmm. this. Yeah. If it were a man, it would be, it would be just as easy to say. Mm-hmm. Open and, and I shut. think that she should be held to the same fucking standard as some creep dude creeping on a fucking young lady. It's the same shit. Mm-hmm. Well, don't worry. And people she won't in society. Be. Well, no, of course. And this fucking society also looks at like sexual predatory behavior against men of any age as less Mm -hmm. damaging and more of like a laughable, oh, how can men be raped? How can men be sexually assaulted? How can men be sexually harassed? Right. Or boys thing. And I, that's super fucked up. That's just another fucking patriarchal Mm -hmm. bullshit thing. It's just as bad. It's just as damaging. And she deserves to be punished Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for her actions. Period. She raped a child. Yep. Okay. Another horrible quote from Mary Kay. If someone had told me, if anyone had told me there is a specific law that says this is a crime, I did not know. I've said this over and over again. Had I known, if anyone knows my personality, just the idea, this would count as a crime. Okay, this is such bullshit because, and I know, okay, they did not, they weren't public about their relationship. While he was mm-hmm. like, while this was going on, yet. But she claims, and she that's could probably say like, married. "Oh, because I'm still married." Right. Yeah, it's fucking not. 
It's that's not the only reason. Like, there's no fucking way that she didn't know that this was not quite right. Yeah. Oh, she's delusional. It's it- that's a bullshit excuse. Oh, I was still married. No, you were separated. And people who are separated date other people pretty commonly. It's not like that outlandish. But they don't date children. But they don't date fucking 12-year-old boys. Okay, let me put this out there. So she let her, or she felt, she felt like she was responsible for her siblings drowning death when she was 11 years old. So psychologically, right. she might be emotionally stunted at 11. So she right. views herself as an 11 year old person. So when she looks at him as a 12 year old, she's not seeing a child or her student, she's seeing a peer. Right. That is my speculation as well, which is why I emphasize the the 11 year old thing. Cause I mm-hmm. think that that's possible, even though I have zero background in psych, haven't even taken psych 101. Yep. Yep. Okay. Ridiculous. So she gave birth <clears throat> to their first daughter uh, oh, with no. Fulau while awaiting trial. Dis- despite pleading guilty to these heinous crimes, pretty little white lady Mary Kay was only sentenced to six months in county jail. Mm-hmm. Three of which were suspended for time already served awaiting trial. So she got three months in county jail. Easy. Yeah. And, of course, this is the American justice system. She is a cis white woman, and he is a young man of color. Yes. We will get in. So why would this case, yeah, we will fucking, why would anyone go out of their way to protect him? Right. Exactly. <laughs> Um, She also was uh, to engage in three years of sex offender treatment. But crucially, she was not required to register as a sex offender. What? Nope. She simply had to abide by the terms of her plea agreement and have no further contact with Villy. This next part of my notes... Clearly that didn't happen. ...is entitled (laughs) Round Fucking 2. No. Oh, my God. I can't. I can't. I can't. So, Mary Kay was incredibly lucky. She got off so easy. It's absolutely fucking ridiculous. Her white privilege really went to bat for her. Not to mention underlying racism and othering of her victim, a child of color. But could she fucking keep it together? Of course not. No. On February 3rd, 1998, just two weeks after getting out of jail, Mary Kay was caught by police in flagrante raping 15-year-old Billy in her car. I thought flagrante was like the town they were in, and I (laughs) I was like, well, that's appropriate. In the town of flagrante. (laughs) Within the city limits of flagrante. (laughs) They should just move there. It was bound to happen. Oh, Um, no. So the age of consent in Washington state was and still is 16. So he was still not old enough to consent at this point. Jesus Christ. Authorities also found $6,200 in cash, baby clothes, and Mary Kay's passport in her car, indicating that she may have been planning to skip out on her parole and possibly also kidnap Villy and their daughter in the process. But that is not that has not been proven, but that was speculated. Because why would she have all these items in her car? Mm Mm-hmm. As a result of her raping Villy again, Mary Kay once again fell pregnant and would give birth to a second daughter in prison. I hate the term also, fell pregnant. Oh my god, I was just going to interrupt to say I love the term <laughs> fell pregnant because it's like falling ill. Yeah, it's like, whoops. It's a debilitating illness because it fucking a is. A child sneezed into my mouth and I fell pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, I think that's how you get pregnant. I'm pretty sure. So yeah. not a child sneezing into your mouth. Okay. If you're Mary Kay, it is. Oh, but I'm yeah. pumped. Woo! Okay. <laughs> God. So, Mary Kay was sentenced to seven and a half years in state prison for violating her parole. She was, quote, unpopular with other inmates. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I'm shocked. Slash the general public. 
<laughs> yeah, you don't want to be a child rapist in prison. You really don't want to be a child rapist in a women's prison. No. No. I feel like. Um, she spent 18 months in solitary confinement sort of for her own attitude, bad behavior, and also for her own protection. Mm. She was also not allowed visits from her husband, Steve, who divorced her soon into this sentence, this second sentence, because he did not divorce her during the first sentence. Well, he probably thought that maybe she would get some psychological help. He might just have not have had time because she was only in there for three months. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um... Quote, my children call prison the faraway place. Mommy's at the faraway place. That is creepy as fuck. Oh, my God, that's so sad. Yeah. Mommy's at the faraway place is the title of my Hallmark movie. (laughs) Mommy's in the upside down. I was just going to (laughs) say the upside down. (laughs) Um, In 2002... So while Mary Kay was still in prison, the Fualao family sued the school district for emotional suffering, lost wages, and the costs of rearing uh, Mary Kay and Billy's two children, because that fell on his parents to raise his two daughters with Mary Kay. Oh, my God. Um, But they lost the case, and no damages were ever awarded. That's fucked. So basically the school district was able to prove that, like, yeah. they had nothing to do with it. And if it happened, right. if it never, ever happened on school grounds and it happened at the community college and on personal property and in the summertime and, you know, whatever, I kind of see the school district's point. Mm. You know? Like, how yeah, could they? I do, too. How, it how it could sucks they that known? no one was awarded damages, but I don't think that it's the school's fault. Yeah, mm-hmm. like, she had no priors. She had no, his, like, how could they have known? Okay. Meanwhile, despite being forbidden from communicating with each other, Mary Kay continued to send coded messages to Villy on the bottles of breast milk she sent for their younger baby. Good Christ. No! Yep. Liquid gold, no. baby. Liquid gold. That breast milk. Ooh. What up? No. Oh, I mean. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> I hate this but, so much. But, but she was she was in prison for like six years, so the breast milk couldn't have been going for more than like the first two years. That's not true. If you're consistently yeah. still It'll pumping, keep going then you'll keep you producing want. until you wean yourself off. So you think you could literally breastfeed your kid until they're like twelve? Well, I know if you, you really can, but do you think she did just to be able to keep sending him messages? I, I would not put, put anything past, past this insane woman. Yeah. Right? That's true. She's done true. nuttier things. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know how long the breast milk secret code went on for. Um, Also, I can see if you were in prison and your baby was outside of prison, that's the only connection that you have to that baby. No, that's great. I am glad that she was able to provide this to her child. It's the note that creeps me out. I'm just saying, even if you weren't passing notes, I could see how emotionally you'd want to support your baby via breast milk for as long as you could if you were in that position. For sure. Yeah, carry carry that on as long Mm -hmm. as you possibly can. I am am gagging at the note, not at the breast milk. I really am. I swear. I gag at breast milk after a child is has a full set of teeth and is able to talk. Eh. That's yeah. If you could ask for that's it, that's your, goal, that's your goal. Yeah. That's your that's your cutoff. That's a line. Yeah. If you for, can for write me. a note. Uh. <laughs> I don't have. I don't have a problem with with it. I mean, when when they're one and a half and two, I don't really have a problem it's with it. It's honestly each That's person's different. decision. It's, 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 it is. It shouldn't and be a gross a factor. We shouldn't, we shouldn't have a cultural line against it. It's everyone's fucking decision. And there's, it, yeah, I mean, and some women can successfully breastfeed for a long time. Some women have a really hard time yeah. breastfeeding. Oh, yeah. No, we're not getting into the breastfeeding debate. No, nope. you do you, babies. Own, you do you. You do you. Not a witch. You do you. I'm drawing my own personal line. Okay. In August 2004, Mary Kay was released from prison after serving less than six years. 
she immediately was forced to register as a level two sex offender. So round two, Thank she God. actually did have to register. At the time of her release, a no contact order with Vili Fulau was still in place, and any contact with him would constitute a violation of Mary Kay's parole. But at this point, Vili was 21 years old, and he applied for a no co- for the no contact order to be lifted. And just God. days later, his request was granted by a judge. So now oh, okay. it's free for all, whatever they want to do. Free game. Yeah. Less than a year later, 43-year-old Mary Kay and Vili Fualau, uh, 21 years her junior, married in a widely publicized ceremony. The infamous couple sold exclusive access to Entertainment Tonight for their wedding photos, and they have not shied away from tabloid attention. Any- that fucking grosses me out. Mm-hmm. I've always had a problem with that. Like, I get it. Now you're both, now you're finally both consenting adults. You want to go get married? Go ahead. Fucking do your thing. Mm -hmm. But, like, the selling it Mm -hmm. to the tabloids, Mm -hmm. just as a big, like, fuck you, I waited this out, and now I get to marry the child I've been fucking since, Mm -hmm. you, you know, for the last 12 years. Well, I'm sure it's just it disgusting. paid for their dream wedding. Uh, well, I'm also no. sure that she can't, she's not easily employable. <laughs> well, she's employed. I mean, that's true. But she's I mean, employed it's, now. It's still money. Yeah. It's money. And if they're comfortable with what they've done, then who are we to say that that's, you know, it's mm-hmm. money. Until there's they- no demand for shit like that from the public, then that's still going to keep happening. And obviously, I mean, that's we're, true. It's, we're making money off of this crazy, yeah, I was just awful say, story. I know we're in a similar yeah. industry, but st- it's just this just grosses me out okay. more than a podcast does. <laughs> so they even hosted a series of hot for teacher nights at a Seattle nightclub. Hence oh, my the name. God. I no, read about this. this is not OK. <laughs> Hence the name of the episode. So you see, it's a direct reference. And we're also very uncomfortable with it. Moving on. <laughs> Young Villy had not been, quote, physically faithful to Mary Kay while she was in prison. Oh. You know teenagers and their hormones. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, no. But. She does know, as she has teenage sons the same uh, age as her lover. Oh my God. But he claimed that he never stopped thinking about her. And Mary Kay has cited this time between 15 and 21 years old as a chance for Billy to sow his wild oats and, quote, do his thing away from her and their relationship. What so she's like, fuck? it's great because he got his youth and he chose to come back to me. But he had two yeah, daughters because he's with you. Damaged. Yeah, because so he exactly. gets a run spring From being up. raped for years as an adolescent boy. Yeah, he had an adolescent room springer while she was in prison. <coughs> Jesus. All right, both maintain that theirs is a, quote, love story and have now been married for 13 years, raising their two daughters, Audrey and Georgia, together. When pushed in interviews, Mary Kay has grown combative and defensive, claiming it doesn't matter how she and Billy met. You don't know our story, but we do. I mean, yeah. Mm. We know it too, though. (laughs) I'm also just bitter that this bitch has a successful 13-year marriage with, like, two beautiful children, (laughs) and I'm still single. (laughs) You know? I'm not willing to do whatever it takes because I'm not willing to rape a 12-year-old boy. (laughs) Thank God. But still fucking bitter. Yeah. This is bullshit. Well, I think it just serves to point out that marriage is not the fucking pinnacle of success. And in fact, it, Clearly can, not. it can actually be rock bottom for some. So, <laughs> so marriage is not the goal. Um, in 
God. In 2017, Villy filed separation papers and hit this move, like almost anything the couple did, made it into the tabloid press. So everybody was like, oh my God, they're getting divorced, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but the couple has since sought counseling and reconciled. And I, I, oh my God! <laughs> Maybe your marriage is rocky because it began as a statutory rape situation. I wrote in. Maybe. I wrote in my notes. Can you imagine being their therapist? Uh, <laughs> no, I can't. <laughs> That's like yeah. You two should get divorced and never see each other again. Charge more if that is oh the my s- God. scenario. Um, yeah. When asked by Barbara Wawa how they would feel... <laughs> Barbara Wawa, 2020 with Barbara Wawa. How they would feel if one of their daughters got involved with a teacher, Fu Lao was vehemently against it. Quote, I don't support younger kids being married or having a relationship with someone older. Because I, I know how <laughs> terrible it is. I don't support it. Apparently, Villy was even against his daughters dating anyone at all while in high school, saying, quote, a relationship could lead to something that you think you wanted back then. You don't really want it years later. I can see Mary Kay's face as this comes out of his <laughs> mouth. Oh, my Just God. Just daggers. <laughs> we will talk yeah. in the car. <laughs> <laughs> just, 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 it's just, it's fine. <laughs> just, 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 meow, meow, meow. Just, just, meow. Oh, just, mm. Mary Kay has a reportedly complicated relationship with her eldest four children, uh, with ex-husband Steve, although there are photos of all of them together. Oh, I'm so glad you brought that up yeah. because I was just going to ask, they like, did, how the fuck? They did attend their wedding. Her older children attended the wedding. Whoa. Wow. Yeah. Uh, and Mary Kay now works as a paralegal, although she maintains, despite pleading guilty, that she was, quote, wrongfully convicted, and she hopes to eventually be removed from the sex offender registry. Okay. Good luck so, with that. So that's Bye. Mary Kay and Billy, y'all. God. <sighs> Good job. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, I mean, A plus. Thank you. Student. Oh, oh, okay. Should I take my top um, off? Or? Take off your top <laughs> if you want a 4.0 no. this semester. Okay. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, I mean, that's what I did for my 4.0. Oh, my, oh God. my God. I was wondering how I you just got waited until I got. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I took my top off at home in privacy to do my homework. So it is still true. (laughs) Yep. That I took my top off to get a 4.0. It's just way more comfortable without a top to do homework. It's true. Fair enough. Care Of is a monthly subscription vitamin service that delivers completely personalized vitamin and supplement packs right to your door. No pants required. It's amazing. So this year, make health and wellness a top priority with the help of Care Of's monthly subscription vitamin service. Whether you're focused on glowing skin, my ultimate goal in life, Mm -hmm. um, boosting your energy levels, definitely need a boost, getting more sleep, I got that one down pat, (laughs) or generally uh, being healthy, Care Of can help you out. So the way it works is they have this fun online quiz. It asks you about your diet, your health goals, your lifestyle choices. For example, your allergies, like uh, get that fish oil away from me. I will literally die. Um, (laughs) And it takes only five minutes to find out your personal scientifically backed vitamin and supplement recommendations. And I'm a big vitamin person, but uh, Care Of still suggested vitamins for me that I had never even heard of. Oh yeah. And I so excited to try. Um, so it can also just be really hard to know what vitamins or supplements you should be taking. Um, but care of makes it easy to find out what you specifically need to be your healthiest. So it's way, makes way more sense than just like wandering down the aisles at the drugstore, pulling things off the shelf. Like Mm -hmm. this is edited for you and your body. This has a cool Um, label. Yeah, I think I'll ing- better. I think I'll ingest this and hope for the best. Right. Yeah, no, definitely. Like, let's trust the experts here. Um, and 
And something that I love is that a portion of every sale goes towards the Good Plus Foundation, yes. which provides expectant mothers in need with valuable prenatal vitamins. So you can feel healthy and good, and you can also help uh, an expectant mother be as healthy as she can be. So that's really great. I love that. That's so important. So you can mm-hmm. take advantage of this month's special New Year offer for 50, that's 5-0% off your first month of personalized care of vitamins. Go to TakeCareOf.com and enter the promo code GALS50. So again, that is 50% off your first month of personalized care of vitamins. Go to TakeCareOf.com and enter the code GALS50, gals five zero. Treat yo bodily systems. Away luggage is the best luggage that you will ever own. I'm just going to, that's the first thing I'm going to say about it. And I stick yep. by that. <laughs> yep. So do I. It, Kenyon and I both have a, a piece of luggage from Away and we're never going back. Never going back. Nope. Yep. Uh, Away nope, uses high-quality materials while offering a much lower price compared to other brands by cutting out the middleman and selling directly to you. And it comes in a beautiful, huge box in a beautiful drawstring bag. Yes. I just, I, I, th- there's nothing I don't like about this about this company. Mm-hmm. You can choose from a variety of colors and four sizes. Four. You've got the carry-on, which is a nice little compact thing. The bigger mm-hmm. carry-on, which is a slightly bigger carry-on. But again, both of these can go on the airplane with you. Couldn't mm-hmm. be more convenient. The medium or the large for extended stays. And let me tell you, I have two of these four sizes, and I have every intention of purchasing the other two like within the next 48 hours. <laughs> yep, yep. We've already ramped each other up about how we're going to order a full set for ourselves. I, I also have two. I have the carry-on and the bigger carry-on. They are both heavenly. Uh, I love that the bigger carry-on has uh, an outside zipper slot yes. for your cell phone. It makes going through airport security super convenient and, and easy. Laptop. Yes, it's amazing. Mm-hmm. So um, it also has other key design features like it is all the suitcases are made with premium German polycarbonate, uh, unrivaled in strength and impact resistance. I can definitely attest to that. I've checked my carry-on bags also, and they have come out totally spotless, pristine, beautiful. Mm-hmm. And they're very lightweight. I have back problems. It can be hard to lift a fully loaded suitcase up into that overhead bin, but not with a way. Very simple. Um, The interior features a patent-pending compression system, helpful for overpackers, me. Mm -hmm. Uh, Four 360-degree spinner wheels that guarantee a smooth ride. It is like butter. I was making my suitcase do little pirouettes in the hallway, and my sister Mm -hmm. started making fun of me, and I was like, no, seriously. Try it. It's so luxurious walking through an airport with this suitcase. Mm -hmm. It's, ugh, I can't even. I just love it so much. It also has a TSA-approved combination lock built into the top of the bag to prevent theft. That's very cool. Removable, washable laundry bag keeps dirty clothes separate from clean clothes. Gonna need that for my stanky socks, (laughs) y'all. Um... Both sizes of the carry-on are able to charge all cell phones, tablets, e-readers, anything that is powered with the magic of the USB cord. And a single charge of the Away carry-on will charge your iPhone five times, so you'll never be left without phone-ness on your travels. And it's got two ports, and one charges faster than the other if you're in a hurry, which I think is so cool. That's amazing. Yeah. Away suitcases come with a lifetime warranty. If anything breaks, they'll fix it or replace it for you for life, which is incredible. They've also got a 100-day trial, so you can live with it, vibe with it, travel with it, take selfies with it. And if at any Mm -hmm. point you decide that it's not for you, which, like, you won't, you can return it for a full refund, no questions asked. They've got free shipping on Away orders within the lower 48, so take advantage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then carry-on sizes that are compliant with all major U.S. airlines while maximizing the amount that you can pack. And I got mine for Christmas, and I took all my, like, you know, Christmas sweaters and everything, brought them home with me in this suitcase, and I was Mm -hmm. shocked at how much I could fit in there. It's shocking. It's amazing. Yeah. I'm an overpacker, and I went to Madagascar for 10 days in just my bigger carry-on. 
That is insane. It was, it was great. I love it. Yeah. And they have a retail store in New York City, so if you're in the area, go check out their suitcases in person. So for 20 bucks off a suitcase, visit awaytravel.com forward slash gals20 and use the promo code gals20 during checkout. So again, that is 20 bucks off a suitcase at awaytravel.com forward slash gals20 and use that promo code gals20 during checkout for that 20 bucks off and you won't regret it. I promise you. It's the best ever. Just buy it now. Treat yo vacation. Zola, the wedding company that will do anything for love, is reinventing the wedding planning and registry experience to make the happiest moment in couples' lives even happier. Can you imagine? <sighs> From engagement to wedding and decorating your first home, Zola is there, combining compassionate customer service with modern tools and technology, all in the service of love. They've got <laughs> 500,000 couples who have used Zola, so you know it works. And mm-hmm. those couples are far less stressed than normal because Zola takes the stress out of wedding planning with free wedding websites. They've got your dream wedding registry, affordable save the dates and invitations, and easy to use planning tools. It's all online. It's all in one place. It saves so much time for couples and their guests. So you start with your free wedding website. It's so easy. It takes just a couple minutes to set up. They've got over a hundred beautiful designs to choose from, and then that design can carry over into your save the dates, everything. It's just the full package. They make it easy to personalize your favorite design with all your wedding details. Kenyon's wedding invitations were so South African looking. I loved it. It was perfect. They can add photos, um, stories about how you met. They've got an FAQ section like, can I bring my kids? The answer is no. Do I have a plus one? (laughs) Probably. I don't know. (laughs) And you can put your your Zola registry link on your wedding website so that guests can get all the details they need all in one place. Yes, it is so convenient. And you can really build your dream registry at Zola. They have the widest selection of gifts at all different price points. Uh, So there's really something for every guest to give. So it's always nice to like, some guests like to pick several items that are, you know, $5. Some guests like to pick one item that's $50 or what have you. They have the full selection, full range. They have brands that you love like Cuisinart, Sonos. I registered for both of those brands uh, (laughs) recently. And um, they also have a completion discount. So you get 20% off when you order stuff that is left over on your registry that wasn't purchased before the wedding. Um, And so Zach and I recently did that and got a whole new set of crate and barrel dishes, y'all. Yes, it's awesome. So to start your free wedding website and also get $50 off your registry on Zola, go to Zola.com forward slash gals. That's Z-O-L-A dot com forward slash G-A-L-S. Again, start your free wedding website and also get $50 off your registry on Zola by going to Zola.com forward slash gals. Treat your wedding. So my case. Today, we're going to talk about super creep, Tad. Yes, you heard that correctly, <laughs> Tad. Oh. oh, no. I already I hate thought it. you're going to be a Tad super creeped. You are, and you're going to be more creeped when you get his last name, which is Cummins. <laughs> tad Cummins? I'm a Tad Cummins for you. <laughs> no. Oh, no. Of Kaluka, oh, no. Tennessee. Oh. Okay. He was a boy, she was a girl. Can I have it? No. He was a high school health he was teacher. He was a full grown man. <laughs> he was a she full was a grown child. fucking man. She was a child. <laughs> he was a high school health teacher, and I'm sorry, but like already you, just knowing how much of a perv this dude is, that he's a goddamn health teacher. Mr. Yeah. Yeah. Cummins reflex. teaching sex ed. <laughs> I <laughs> hate it so oh. much. Oh, God. And he set his droopy eyes on then 15-year-old <laughs> student Elizabeth Thomas. Ew. <laughs> Wait, how old is he? He's 50. She's oh. 15. Oh. My oh. God. Okay. Oh. Yep. Hate it. Elizabeth had been homeschooled her entire life, and this was a life that was troubled from the get-go. Oh. She and her 10 siblings were abused by their mother. The abuse was so severe that she and one of her sisters finally reported their mother, Kimberly Thomas, to CPS. 
Uh, Kimberly denied any wrongdoing, but the case resulted in her being removed from the home in 2016 and charged with child abuse and neglect. Her mm. being removed from the home being Kimberly being removed the from mom, the home. The mom removed yep. from the, her 10 children. Yep. Oh. In, Yeah. In one trip to court, she was acquitted, but as of 2017, was scheduled for trial on remaining charges. I'm not sure what the status of that is, and it's not entirely relevant to this case, but just kind of, <coughs> excuse me, sets the tone for how much this poor young lady has gone through at such a young age. Mm-hmm. Um, Elizabeth's father, Anthony, worked nearly around the clock as an exterminator to support the family and was out of the home so much, he insisted he didn't know how bad things were at home. Okay, which, but... Willful I, yeah. ignorance at that point. Exactly. I think it was a little bit of both. I think he was out of the house You're most still of the time. A parent. Yeah. So figure it out. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Exactly. Um, their mother's removal prompted Elizabeth to go to public school for the first time. She said her classmates bullied her. She was eventually, and she eventually confided in her popular and friendly health teacher, Tad Cummins, Ugh. who was then 50 years old. Uh. Over time, Jill Cummins, Tad's wife of the last 30 years, said Elizabeth became like another member of their family. She said she saw the interactions between her husband and Elizabeth as father-daughterly, and Elizabeth started attending church with them. Okay. Quote, Quote, in fact, I called her our third daughter sometimes, Jill told 2020 in an interview. I mean, if he were a normal guy, I could kind (laughs) of see how that might happen. Yeah. 100%. Hundred percent, and f- like families like this, or families take in kids like this all the time. It's not right. outlandish, right? You know, but it's like a foster situation, right? When he, as long as one person's not trying to fuck a child, right? It's all fine, right? Um, and the relationship between them seemed. Fine until there was a strange interaction between Elizabeth and Tad in the school cafeteria. Elizabeth said, quote, I was standing there with a few friends, and then they said, Are you hungry? And I went, I don't have a soul, or if I did, I'd be hungry, or something like that. She's making a joke. Weird. <laughs> and weird. Then, no, wa- no wonder she was joke. bullied. Love it. Yeah. Um, and then he I'm came joking. to me and he, and that is absolutely a joke, but yes. And then he came to me and he pointed at me and he said, my soul sees your soul. Oh. Oh my God. Oh. Kind of scary. I wouldn't said. like that if the guy mm. who I had a crush on said that to me. Right. Anyone. That's anyone eerie. could say that and it kills Keep the Keep your soul away from my soul, you fucking perv. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Can Despite- we also talk about quickly how we had a teacher in high school who was trying to set me up with his son, who was not in our high school, who was over 18? He was what? over 18? Yeah. What's his I name? I don't remember this from your boyfriend box. Oh, no, I never I remember met- the I never teacher met- you're talking about, and I'm not going to say it out loud. Yeah, I never met the kid, but that teacher, like, repeatedly talked to me about how I would be perfect for his son. And it was just like, ha ha, okay. Like, yeah. what? Don't like that at no. all. Yeah, and that was a very popular teacher. It was the teacher that, like, everybody loved, and I, Lucy and I fucking hated him, but everyone else was, like, it obsessed was not with this guy. It was not our gorgeous science teacher. It no. was not. No. Anyway. Just so everyone knows that man is pure and spotless and wonderful. And he we used to brush seen him his since teeth. 2002. Yeah. I don't Not care. even. 99. <laughs> I don't care. Oh, I don't God. care. Yeah. He's perfect. It was literally 99. Oh my God, I'm going to barf. <laughs> anyway, despite these weird moments with Cummins, Elizabeth felt that she had finally found an adult that she could trust. Quote, he made me feel like I didn't have anyone else and no one really cared about me like he did. Hi, classic abuse. Yeah, totally. Jason Watley, for, uh, attorney for the Thomas family, put it perfectly when he said, quote, he was specifically grooming this child for a very specific purpose, and that was a relationship. He chose a girl that was clearly having issues because she went to him for, uh, quote, unquote, counseling. She was the perfect victim. This reminds me a lot of the amazing podcast out of Australia, Teacher's Pet, and everybody should listen Ooh. to it in its entirety. It's incredible. It's so well mm-hmm. done. Check out Teacher's Pet. Will do. 
So Elizabeth said that Tad convinced her not to seek professional mental help. Mm. Quote, whenever I tried to seek mental help, he told me no. I was feeling real low, and I was wanting to get on antidepressants and try to go to a therapist. And he told me not to do it because it would change who I was. Ugh. Yep. His behavior got even more inappropriate when he started sending her explicit messages over Instagram. We are in this era, people. Oh, wow. Even 50-year-olds can figure out how to use Instagram. It is a dangerous world. So, yeah, if it gets their dick wet, they'll try. Mm -hmm. Ugh. Elizabeth later described it as, quote, sexting, so we can all imagine what he was sending. When they were alone in his classroom, she said the verbal communication was just as explicit. Quote, it was fourth period or fourth block. I can't remember the conversation. And then next thing I know, he said, you'd look pretty nice naked. Okay. Subtle. Okay. Yeah. Whenever he first kissed me, that was whenever I realized this is getting too far, she recalled. I didn't want anyone to really know. I was scared of what would happen if anyone did know. I didn't want to make him mad or make him want to come after me or anything like that. Mm. This is the part where, I mean, there are a lot of parts where I like lost my shit doing this research, but personal mm-hmm. favorite shit losing moment. Elizabeth called Tad a, quote, head pusher. Is, does that mean what oh. I think it means? Does that Yo, mean what does. I think it means? Oh. <laughs> oh We've God. talked about this, people. Yeah, I know. It's, it just gave me a coughing fit. I just got so upset. <clears throat> yep. Explaining that Cummins would sometimes physically push her head and that she was afraid of him most of the time. If anyone is new to the show and has not listened to our former head pusher rant, mm-hmm. and just all people who enjoy head, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. if Keep the your other hands if, where I can fucking see them, if the other party does not say to you, you know what I really like? I like when you push my head down on your cock. Mm-hmm. Don't do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. but if Don't they do like it, fucking great. Do it. Sure. If, if your yeah, partner sure. likes it and that's a consensual an act and you've had a conversation thing. about it, mm-hmm. great. That's great. fucking awesome. Do your, it. Your gag reflex is incredible and you are a better person than me. Good for you. Mm-hmm. If you have not had that conversation and someone is giving you the fucking blessing of putting your cock in their mouth, you keep your fucking hands off my head yeah. unless you are gently caressing my hair to say thank you. Mm-hmm. Thank you, baby. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Anyway, moving on. <clears throat> I was afraid to see him angry. He doesn't take no well, Elizabeth oh, said. Yeah, great. great. Here's another part that incited rage. A student reported seeing Elizabeth and Tad kissing inside of his classroom, uh, reported this to school officials. (coughs) And over the course of a week, the school and eventually local police investigated it, but Thomas denied everything. It took a week for them to even investigate, really. So she denied everything, and then... They both did. Yeah. Yeah. They denied it, but it took forever for the investigation to, like, even start, which was annoying. Mm -hmm. And while the investigation was continuing, Elizabeth says that the school allowed her to go on a class field trip where she says Tad was the only chaperone. Like, they were still allowed to be in contact with each other. Oh, Oh my God. God. Okay, then you can sue the school. Yeah. 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 Mm Mm-hmm. Elizabeth said Tad took the opportunity to proposition her for sex, but she refused. Days after the field trip, the school directed both Tad and Elizabeth not to have contact with each other after the field trip. Mm-hmm. When Slash he's already fucking fire him. Yeah, I know. Mm-hmm. When Tad was interviewed by detectives, he described the relationship as quote that of a father figure at school and denied ever kissing her. Mm-hmm. A few days later, Tad was suspended from the Kaluka Unit School after he was reprimanded for once again allowing Thomas to be in his classroom. Suspended, not fired. Mm-hmm. Suspended. Mm-hmm. Even after breaking very specific rules about right. not having contact with her. Right. Suspended. Fuck that shit. When students found what was happening, there were a lot of names and teasing that came around and a lot of bullying outside and inside of the school, Elizabeth said. They felt like I ruined his life, she said. Oh, my God. Oh, kids can be so mean. That is. Yeah, oh. but guess what? So can adults. Think of any time, like, this is so fucking common 
Right. Look at fucking Brett Kavanaugh and people who think that right. his life was ruined. Right. He's right. a fucking Supreme Court justice. This is like such a knee jerk thing for like shitty white dudes to say. Yeah. Hold them to <laughs> higher standards. I hate it. Sorry. I'm coughing so much. I need more tea. Hold on. Take your time, baby girl. Take it a sip. Okay. My bird flu. It's back. <laughs> <laughs> Even teachers, Elizabeth said, participated in the teasing. Ugh. A lot of them were made aware, and they also did a lot of the teasing and a lot of the name-calling, she said. Mm. Elizabeth said Cummins forced her to send him secret messages through social media, even after he was suspended. Quote, I had to keep in communication with him while he was suspended, and any time that I wouldn't pose for a few hours, he would go crazy and say that I was cheating on him. And saying if he found out that I was with another boy, he'd kill them. Okay. Yep. She Hmm. said the bullying at school became intolerable and Cummins threatened her saying she had to go on the run with him or else. Oh. Yep. So he started calling my phone. Sometimes he'd be threatening to kill himself or ending someone else's life if I didn't go, she said. He said if he couldn't have me, he'd kill himself. Anytime he threatened himself, he'd also threaten my family. Just to put it out there, anyone who threatens you with their own self-harm, that is abuse. Mm-hmm. 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 Yes, they need mm-hmm. help, but they do not need your help. Right. And it's okay to say, yo, no, I'm hearing you, and I have to take this seriously, so I'm going to send an ambulance to your home to make sure that you don't hurt yourself. It's okay to say that. Yeah, if somebody is threatening self-harm to coerce you into doing something or manipulate you into doing something, that is abuse. Absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. fucking I'm so glad that you said that because it's important that people understand that. Yeah. Um. She said she felt trapped, especially when he threatened her with guns. He threatened to shoot himself to use the guns. He had two of them. Um, She said she reluctantly agreed to leave town with him. Quote, I felt really bad about leaving, and I didn't want to leave, but I knew if I didn't, something would happen. So, Tad Cummins left a note for his wife. Remember, he's still fucking married. Oh, right. And there's a picture of the note on the drive because his handwriting is (sighs) creepy. So you can read along if you like. Um, The note says, quote, I am so sorry. I am on my way to Virginia and maybe D.C. just to think and clear my mind of all this crap. I'm assuming this crap that he's referring to is like the allegations against him and his suspension from the school and the shit going on. Oh, my God. His handwriting looks like my handwriting. No, it doesn't. (laughs) Honey, no, it doesn't. It's way worse, which is Don't hurt yourself like that. Your handwriting is way worse. Don't worry. (laughs) No. I know. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Anyway. The, the, the note continues. I am not running away. I'll be back. Don't call the police. They'll think I ran because I'm guilty, and I am not. I love you, and I'll call soon. Please forgive me. Love, Tad. I'm not guilty, but please forgive me. Okay. <laughs> Jesus. Elizabeth said she went to a restaurant with an overnight bag at the agreed-upon time, so this is for them to leave town together. But Tad was late, so she said she left the bag on the ground. Inside the bag was a note that Elizabeth said she hoped would tip off authorities. Quote, he told me to write that I was going to New York. That way, it would it seemed like the, the police would go to New York to look for me. Mm-hmm. He thought they were dumb, but they weren't. Mm-hmm. That was his plan, but I wrote that I was going to New York City, and I made it sound unbelievable, so they knew I was going the opposite way. So she, like, uh, augmented the note, I guess. So she fully knows, she fully knows that she's basically being kidnapped. Oh, and is yeah, trying you just wait. To, oh, okay. She absolutely knows. She's no idiot. She absolutely fucking knows what's happening. Um, Elizabeth said she had also told her sister, Sarah, call the police if I'm not home by six. I just wanted police to be called because I knew once I got in that car, I wasn't getting out. Oh. She thinks she's going to die. I, don't, uh, I mean, oh. at, at the very least, she's being kidnapped, but I think she thought she was going to be killed. Oh. So Tad picked her up at the restaurant after stopping at a local gas station to fill up his tank. As soon as we went to go to leave, he set a gun in the middle console, like out where she could see it. And I knew that I wasn't getting out of the car. He made me throw my phone off a bridge and his phone as well. That way the police couldn't track us. And then he disconnected the GPS by a screwdriver in the glove compartment and he broke it out of the front and then he unhooked the radio and unhooked the GPS. Mm -hmm. As their journey began, 
She said, uh, Cummins kept careful watch over her. Uh, quote, it wasn't like, it was like a kidnapping. I had to stay in the car with him at all times. I wasn't allowed to be in a store without him. And if I, if he was in the store, all the doors had to stay locked. Like if he went to the store yeah, and she was in the car, all the doors had to stay locked and he'd turn on the alarm, like the car alarm. So she couldn't get so, out. So true love. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, she said when they were in Oklahoma, Cummins dyed his beard and got her to dye got her some dye to change her hair color. And when they stayed at hotels, uh, she said they had to, she had to sleep next to him Mm -hmm. and there was definitely rape happening. Mm -hmm. Um, quote at the hotels, I would shower every morning because I felt dirty and disgusting every morning and he didn't help at all. Like he was making her Mm -hmm. feel disgusting. The things he would make you do, she said with a sigh, it wouldn't, it wouldn't help the way that I was feeling. And I just tried to shower to get away from him, but sometimes he wouldn't let me shower alone because I had to be in the same place with him at the exact same time. Uh, no uh, privacy. I mean, that alone with anyone, even any like age. a cherished loved one. Yeah. Mm. I, I'd i commit murder if someone That's followed me even into the bathroom. That's one of those things that you realize after the age of like, let's say 23, that showering mm-hmm. together is not great and showering alone is infinitely better. I mean, I'll still do it because it is fun from Living time to time. alone is preferable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, Lucy and I are married. We're both like, it's the worst. <laughs> I, and I can still enjoy a shower with someone else because I live alone. Right. So yeah. I get all the space I need. It's great. That yeah. said, thinking back to when I was 15 years old, the thought of being in a position like that with a 50-year-old man. Mm. It's we horrifying. It's beyond even watch, horrifying. We couldn't even watch Life of Brian with your dad in the same room. It was too uncomfortable. Like, it's yeah. just not, it's against nature. It's just not yep. okay. No. 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 Um. And it, people would ask her, like, if she had opportunities to sneak out, maybe how, when he was sleeping, blah, blah, blah. But she didn't because, quote, he made me sleep naked and my clothes would be put somewhere else. And he was a light sleeper, so if I moved, he'd wake up. Mm. And I couldn't even use the bathroom at night without him having to stand right there, like, outside the door. Oh, my God. So, no, he she was... had no opportunities, but also, <laughs> even if she did... <laughs> And that's part of, like, you know, Stockholm Syndrome slash yeah, just general and, and fear. Fight or flight, fight or flight. Like, he yeah. has guns. Yeah. yeah. He's threatening violence against her. Yeah. She was likely less at risk by staying with him yeah. Yeah. than trying to escape. Right. It's hard to make those judgment calls, and it's annoying that people would even be like, well, why didn't you sneak out while he was sleeping? And she's like, are you fucking kidding me? And he's threatening himself, and she's 15, yeah. and she doesn't yeah. want anyone to die even him no. and he's threatening third parties it sounded like mm-hmm. at one point so she doesn't want anyone to get hurt she just wants yeah she's threatening he's this threatening her family end. yeah it's fucked up uh she said quote he was really mean and said hurtful things a lot of the time he called me his wife sometimes and said that we were going to get married and i was going to live with him until i died nope 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 Oof. the most fucked up shit ever he even controlled what she ate, she said. Ugh. He told me he likes skinny girls, and I ate what he told me to, because if I didn't, I wouldn't get it at all. I was hungry. Oh, no. All yep, right. it's so fucked up. It's just full-blown abuse. Okay. Yep. So along the way, uh, she said that they stopped in Colorado, including Aspen. So they left Tennessee, and they're heading, like, across the country. They're going toward Texas. He wants to go to Mexico. There's, mm-hmm. like, all these places that they're stopping. Um, and then Utah, which is where they were when, uh, Tad started buying alcohol for her, which is kind of funny to me because like Utah has the craziest alcohol laws because it's (laughs) like all fucking municipal. Yeah. And it's, it's all Mormons. It's cuckoo bananas. Um, so she was having emotional issues. She said, quote, like clearly, because this is a super fucked up situation. She already experienced the symptoms of depression. She's now kidnapped. Yeah. And he starts buying her alcohol, she said, because I was having problems and he was done dealing with them. Mm-hmm. So instead of realizing he's ruining this person's life and getting her help, he's like, I'm going to get you drunk. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. Why would he stop now? Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Um, 
But she was not going to give up. The drive took them across several states, and she said that she covertly collected evidence on the journey. Nice. Ooh, Quote from she's each smart. state. Yeah, I know. From each state that I took, I had rocks, and I'd write what county or where, wherever we were when we were in that state. Nice. These are quotes of hers, so I'm having a hard time reading that. But yeah, that her was if I, is, is iffy. It's not the best, but it is what it is. Um, that was if I did get caught or he got caught and I got rescued, that someone would see the rocks and hopefully he could be charged for each one that he was in, like each state that he was in. Oh, Ooh. good girl. Good yeah, girl. So smart. smart. So smart. Like, keep meticulous record in any yes. way that you can. And she's finding her creative way of doing that. And I yes. think that's brilliant. Bitch uh, watches oxygen. For real. Yeah. <laughs> uh, she said she knew there was a search for her and Tad after seeing a news report once on the TV at one of the hotels they stayed at. Quote, I remember it was a girl announcing it, a nationwide Amber Alert, and I knew it was for me. Mm-hmm. And there was. She was on the road with him for over a month, and there was a nationwide manhunt wow. for them. And, yeah, Amber Alerts everywhere. This was in 2016, so I don't think... We had, well, maybe we did. You get those, like, iPhone alerts, alerts. now. I think yeah, we, we had did. that. Yeah. yeah, I think we had that then. But if it, it's possible that they just targeted the areas where they thought they were, because I don't remember getting one <coughs> for her, but it's it's possible. I mean, this was a while back, so it's possible. I, think I just don't remember. our phones would be blowing up all the goddamn time if we got every Amber Alert in the nation. No, for sure. But I think right. that sometimes when these cases, like, get really huge, like, this was a national right. case. And when they're crossing state lines, I think sometimes you get more of those. But, yeah, typically it's, like, local Amber Alerts. I get them for, like, Hennepin and Ramsey County. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I don't know. But anyway, I think that the, the Amber Alert system is great, and I'm glad that we have it. But mm-hmm. it did end up helping save her life. So uh, he wanted to continue their journey down south of the border, she said. He wanted to go to Mexico because apparently that's free land. And he wanted to go to try to go to Panama because that's where he was before on mission trips. Of course, oh, he's a fucking what a, Christian what a good missionary. Christian. Yeah. A good man. Clearly also, a great um, Christian. Also, some of my research suggested that the age of consent in a lot of Central... Well, not a lot, but some Central and South American countries is just puberty. Right. Mm. So he might have been seeking a place where he wouldn't be, pros- you know, it wouldn't look right. weird or whatever. Very, very possible. Right. Very possible. Um, she said he bought a kayak, hoping they could kayak all the way to Panama. What? <laughs> Which oh. they literally, he packed her up in a fucking kayak, put her on the river with him, oh. and actually made an attempt at this but they got to the point where rapids were so bad you fucking idiot oh that they had to abandon that plan oh my god what a fucking and head back north uh, up river to a place called black bear ranch commune some sort of like hippie living situation a health teacher not a geography teacher am i right hundred percent moron yeah you oh don't go to Colorado on your way to Texas from I Tennessee. Mean, <laughs> I understand weaving around yeah. and trying to throw off a scent. Like, yeah, he's a fucking moron. But that part, while it's dumb, it's, right. that makes sense to me, actually, right. to throw people off. Um, but so they end up on this Black Bear Ranch commune. It's a community living situation. It's pretty much like hippies living completely off the grid. Mm-hmm. And he wants to kind of settle there for a while. And she says, quote, because nobody would recognize us. And it was like the last free place on earth where people come to be free or something like that is what she said. Mm -hmm. I knew that once I was at Black Bear Ranch, I couldn't go anywhere. There was literally nobody out there. So it's like Mm. so secluded. Isolated, yeah. Yeah, people choosing to live a very isolated communal lifestyle. They're not getting Amber Alert texts. No, and this is now in California. So they're all the way in California. This commune is located, quote, off the grid in California. They take them in, they give them a bed, and they start sharing their food with them, and then they start working at the commune or whatever. Mm -hmm. Things start to go south as the couple openly defied the commune's work rules, staying in bed all day, and Tad insisting on carrying around a pocket knife for protection when they're not supposed to have weapons. Mm -hmm. What a dick. The people there did like Elizabeth. She said, quote, the people, they liked me a lot. A lot of them did. It was kind of because I didn't argue. I'd clean up after myself. I didn't make too much noise. I was quiet. 
because you're a fucking captive. Yeah, and because you were raised in an abusive homeschooled home with yeah. nine siblings. Exactly. Ugh. But eventually, because of Tad being a total dick, they were asked to leave the commune. Oh, my God. Everyone hates this guy. Everyone hates him. Quote, he got mad and took out his knife and then dropped it on the ground and started screaming. I thought, this is going to be the end. He's going to shoot somebody. But they left. Down on their luck, the two were taken in by a caretaker named Griffin Barry, who gave them a place to stay in at a, at a nearby cabin. Barry told a neighbor nearby about the couple that was staying with them, and later that night, the neighbor warned him that the two might be the fugitives featured in the Amber Alert. Thank God mm-hmm. someone's watching TV out in the middle of fucking nowhere. Yeah. Barry and the neighbor called the police, and with the tip authorities, raced to the small town in North, Northern California and surround this cabin. Uh, Elizabeth says, quote, I came out of the cabin, and it was early morning. I think he went to go wash out uh, our dishes from the night before, but then I saw someone up on the hill. I knew it was the police. As soon as he walked around the bush, all you hear is, hands up, it's over, which Good. have got to be like the greatest fucking <laughs> four words you've ever heard in your life. Yes. 38 days after mm. she left her home in Tennessee, she was finally found. It's amazing she wasn't killed. I mean, mm-hmm. honestly. Like, this right. is unfortunately, like, a rare happy ending. Right. Um, it was the best day of my life, she said, the day that she was found. Before police could take him away, she said he whispered one last thing to her. Oh, no. I know. He's, I've got, like, Voldemort's face in my head on some, mm-hmm. like, fat, shitty... Do you, have, do you have photos of this douche? Oh, yeah. They're both... There's a ton of photos of the two of them on the drive. Okay. Um, quote, he said not to tell them that we had done anything, meaning sex, mm-hmm. or that he had forced me to go. Say that I went willingly. Say that he was trying to protect me. He told me to go along with it. Yeah, nice try, Tad. Yeah. Eventually, as Elizabeth detailed her story to police, no longer afraid of what her teacher could do to her. Quote, I know he's a bad man, and I've blamed myself a lot. But now I know that he's at fault. Yes, queen. He, made, he himself made him do it. Other people don't choose your actions. You do. In April of 2018, he pled guilty to obstructing justice and taking a minor across state lines for sex. He faces a mandatory 10-year sentence. What? Not nearly fucking long enough. Yep. For kidnapping? And rape and yep. oh, okay, but that's it's a, a mandatory. They can add the, it can be more. It's than a mandatory that. minimum. It can okay. be more than that. I okay. just think that those mandatory minimums should be like life. But that's just me. Okay, okay. Um, but his sentencing was delayed. Like this. Well, yeah, there no, are a lot of, of mandatory minimums that are fucking bullshit. I completely sure. agree. Drugs is a lot different than kidnapping a minor right. for sex. Right. Let's have a fucking 25 year mandatory min- minimum for like a young black man with a first time like marijuana offense. But this mm-hmm. guy gets to rape a girl all over the country and he mm-hmm. faces a minimum of only 10 years. Mm-hmm. That's where I have a fucking problem with it. Right. Um, but his sentencing was delayed in November. So I don't think he's actually gone to fucking jail yet. I've looked. I've, I've typed, like, where is Tad Cummins mm-hmm. into a million different searches, and all I see are these close to the end of 2018 news reports that his sentencing has been delayed, so I don't think he's been sentenced yet. Shit. If someone knows what this fucker is up to, let me know. If they know where he is, I want to send him crabs, which apparently is a thing you can do. There's a website <laughs> called crabrevenge.com. Make sure it's the right And you can send Cummins. people crabs. Double yeah. check the age <laughs> and the location. Yeah. But Social yes. security number. I, I know that's basically biological warfare, but I don't care. It's fine. This man deserves crabs. Yeah, he absolutely deserves some crabs in an envelope in the mail. A minimum mandatory sentence of crabs. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, fuck Thank this guy. You. And wow. that's my case. Well done. You Isn't that cuckoo banana? Yeah. It is. You did misunderstand the assignment, but I'm I going did it intentionally it. though. Yeah. I did it yeah. intentionally cuz I saw that you were doing the fan pick, and I fucking love the Mary Kay Laterno mm-hmm. case. Like, I hate it. It's fucking horrific. Mm-hmm. I wanted to flip the switch and do something from the other side. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm here for it. I yeah. love it. All right. Big special thanks this week to our fan picker, Ryan Nijakowski. You Nija nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> Yes, you did. Thank you so much. This was a difficult topic, but 
definitely interesting. Thank you so much. For real. And thank you to Megan Barnes. You're giving $5 a month, and we so appreciate your generosity. I want to fill a hundred barns with hugs (laughs) just for you. You're a barn-raising kind of gal. Bar okay. none. <laughs> Bar none. I know. I know that's different. All but right. Still. Thank you, Rachel Starr. Starr. Kristen Starr. <laughs> Rachel Starr. <laughs> Look what I can do. <laughs> Thank you for putting up with that. Thank you also to <laughs> Kristen Berman, who would lo- like to shout out. I have lost the ability of speech. I love it. Would Fine. like to Great. shout out her sister, Lauren, who got her listening to Wine and Crime in the first place. Thank you, Kristen oh, and sister Lauren. Sister It's cold in here. There must be Kristen Berman in the atmosphere. I said, boom. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Tiffany White. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I prefer Tiffany Robin's Egg Blue. But I will take <laughs> Tiffany White any day, <laughs> any day of the week. Thank you for your generosity, Tiffany. Thank you to who I can only assume is the Megan Fox. <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> Megan Fox! You are luscious. Thank you so you much for your five dollars a month. Your Transformers us. money. Wasn't she in the and Transformers movie? Now you're giving movies? what you have left <laughs> to us. <laughs> what? Wasn't she, she lost the- all the money she made doing Transformers oh. <laughs> with Shia LaBeouf. Oh, it's okay, honey. He'll bounce back. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Sean Cronin, who I almost read as Sean Colvin because I missed the 90s. Oh. And thank you it's so Coldman. much. <laughs> there must be some Sean's in the atmosphere. Okay. I said Cronin. <laughs> okay. Uh, Michelle McKibben. Uh, thank you for McGiven to our Patreon <laughs> Mick account. You gotta, you gotta be kibbing me. me. I was gonna say that. <laughs> you gotta be kibbing me. <laughs> Y'all, thank you so much. Second Tiffany here. Thank you to Tiffany Klein Hands. Mm, your hands very, are so Klein. It's very Klein of you. Be sure to <laughs> wash your hands so they are Klein before returning to work. And <laughs> Tiffany would like to shout out their fellow listener and best friend, Leah. They've been friends since they were 13. Okay, uh, call us when you've been friends since you were eight, okay? Oh, my <laughs> okay. God. Be nice. Okay. <laughs> I came in at 13. Yeah. I've been friends with you since uh, I was 13. You're moving True. anyway. Hopefully okay. oh you're doing better than God. we are. <laughs> you guys are bitches. Leanne Challenger. Ooh. I challenge you to find someone better than Leanne. Let's do it. <laughs> I accept. I'll get back to you with my re- results. Ah, uh, Amanda Petrovito. Ooh. You increase your donation to $5 a month. We love seeing those increases. They're like a warm hug. Mm-hmm. 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 Ooh, Thank you look. so much. I got my first request. For oh, my <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Paige Nearman, you are near to my heart. And thank you for increasing your pledge from 2 to $5 a month. And... Yeah, girl, you get me to do your shout out. What up, Jealous? Paige, you don't know what you've done. You're going to be like written into Kenyon's <laughs> will now. Jealous. <laughs> All right. Her first so book jealous. will be dedicated to you. Paige oh my God, Nearman. Amazing. My husband, my mom, and Paige Nearman. <laughs> and Mrs. Lee. And yeah. Mrs. Sinclair. All right. <laughs> yeah. It's a big dedication, Paige. <laughs> Most of the teachers we had crushes on were elderly women. <laughs> Oh, 100%. Not elderly. They are not going to appreciate that. <laughs> but mature. Mother, maternal. Maternal women. There we go. Uh, Lexi Wolf, you're kicking off the $10 a month chunk of donations. Ooh. 
You're going to be howling at the moon. Ooh. I just burped with excitement <laughs> over your fucking patriarchy wine glass that's coming your way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Same with Amber Layfield. I want to lay in your field. Oh. For $10 a month, you will be getting a fucking patriarchy flexible wine glass in the mail, Amber. Ooh. Got request another request. for me. Uh, Chloe Brewer requests Amanda reads in hard Minnesota accent. <laughs> and Chloe would like to Chloe. shout out her mother <laughs> and say, nice pat to my ma. You know what, Chloe and your ma? Nice pat to both of you. Nice pat. God bless. God bless you. Nice. God, God bless. God bless. God, God bless. bless. <laughs> you know, let's make this a Minnesota goodbye. I've got some newspaper <laughs> clippings for you. Yeah. I have two Tupperwares, but I want them <laughs> back. Wash. <laughs> yeah, and I need the rubber bands back, too, because I'm running low. <laughs> yeah, you know what? It's not It's not a great situation on go, my rubber band box. let me bow. check the air in your tires. Yeah, honey, and, and your fluids. Just yeah. pull into the garage. Yeah. I'm going to send Corey out. Yeah. Are you sure you don't want to spend the night? I think a storm's coming. Yeah, it it is it's 930. February. It's too you, late. You don't it's want too your late. tires all the way full. No, no, no. no. You want to no. keep them a little soft. But mm. these are looking too low. Yeah. You know what? You know what? I'm making up the cat for you. I'm making up the cat for you. You can't leave. No. No, no, no. Come on, no come on back in. Yeah. It's no trouble. Yeah. Take that coat off, Chloe. You're not going anywhere. You're staying the night. And in the morning, I'm making egg bake. Oh, yeah. And cheesy okay. taters. We're moving on. Speaking of cheese, thank you to Ooh. Megan Wiss. Rhymes with Swiss. You oh. Swiss Miss Wiss. Thank you so much for your $10 a month. And oh, thank God you bless. to Stephanie Johnson, who has not made the pun game easy for moi. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Johnson. Stephanie, hardly know her. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, I got nothing. Love you. Yep. Thank you. That's perfect. Getting a wine glass. <laughs> Sandra Broberg. You're my bro, Sandra. And <laughs> I'm going to send you... An iceberg size bill of. Got there. <laughs> Got there. Did you? <laughs> I did. If I say I did, I did. All right. Thank you, Believe Vanessa women. Douglas. You are sweeter than a Cutlass Supreme Ooh. in the early 90s. Ooh. And shout out to Shannon Lack or Latch. <laughs> Lock? You. Loch, Loch Ness. Loch, Loch Ness. <laughs> you did not provide a pronunciation guide, so I can go in whatever direction I choose, and I say lack because you mm-hmm. lack nothing in my eyes. Love it. <laughs> uh, Nick Little. Your name might be Little, but your contribution is big. Thank you so much for your $10 <laughs> a month. And size does not matter, Nick. Nope. I'm a size queen, and I am impressed. You know mm-hmm. who else is a size queen? Cheyenne Bragg. You got a lot Not to brag, brag about. about it. <laughs> <laughs> Not to brag, but Cheyenne donates. Ten dollars a month. Yeah, when we say size queen, we mean donation size. We don't really care about the size of anyone's genitalia. <laughs> <laughs> Just well, a heads up. Some people. We care about some yeah. people's. Okay. Uh, is it my turn? Uh, Emma Perry. Like you, Emma very, hardly knew her. Very much, Emma Perry. <laughs> very much. <laughs> oh, for God's sakes, I've got this Scottish name here. Here we go. It's the Scottish witch. I'm going to do it in a Minnesotan accent. <laughs> Branwyn Turnbullinus. <laughs> Turnbullinus. Turnbullinus. It's great. Turned, <laughs> turnbold. There. Six dollar and sixty six cent donation in us to a thirteen dollar and thirteen cent a month donation. You Bless are that Bron Scottish winning witch. the game. Oh. Braun winning that fucking game. <laughs> All right, big thank you to our trash queen J Isabel Delisle. 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 
You are delicious. I'd be lying if I didn't say your name was kind of hard to pronounce. <laughs> it's been a while since I could hold my head up high. And it's been a while. <laughs> I don't know why sixth grade Amanda just took over, but I feel good about it. We have to wrap this up so I can Andy Hostler. blast that song. Um, thank you, Andy Hostler, for being a trash queen or king or both or neither. Thank you. We love yes. it. Uh, and Alexis Weaver, Weaver us a tale of. Whoa. You're great. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so it. tired. And that's all we have for you. Thank you so much. See you next week. We love, love you. you. Love you. <coughs> Bye. <coughs> Bye. Thanks for listening to Wine and Crime. Our cover art is by Kali Yip. Music by Phil Young and Corey Wendell. Check out our website and blog at wineandcrimepodcast.com. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Wine and Crime Pod. If you have wine recommendations or creepy true crime stories to share, email us at wineandcrimepodcast at gmail.com. Episodes are available on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, basically wherever you get your podcasts. More importantly, if you like the show, please rate, review, and subscribe on Apple Podcasts. It really is the best way to spread the word. We are a totally independent show, so if you'd like to support us and get a shout-out on air, visit our Patreon page to keep this podcast and the wine flowing. Cheers! Hey, true crime listeners, check out our podcast, I Said Goddamn. We're a true crime comedy podcast hosted by two besties who like to share messed up cases that make you say goddamn. Every Sunday, we try to one-up each other's story by sharing a horrific case the other has never heard of. Along the way, we splash in some wildly inappropriate jokes and colorful language. Listen every Sunday from any of your favorite podcast directories. Also, follow us on Twitter at ISGDPodcast or visit our website, isgdpodcast.com.